Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Resonance Arcade. It is Wednesday night, and we are live. And lose a cunt. And, and, okay. <laughs> Before I got the swear mention in there, <laughs> we get the worst possible swear word we could we could is ever have. Is that the have. worst possible swear word? That is the word. Well, I it, think it's quite mainstream these days. Uh, it depends on who you talk to. If you talk to any of our friends, then yes. But we, we just use it as a, a kind of an affectionate. It, but it's used on, like, primetime TV shows. Get stuffed! Yeah, for effect. What, what oh, primetime TV? No, you don't see it on Emmerdale yeah. or something, yeah. Game of Thrones. <laughs> Game of Thrones it used a lot, yeah. Prime yeah. Time, what, what, is primetime uh, after uh, the uh, watershed? Well, that's not, prime it's not time, time. Prime time, time is... When most people watch telly. Yeah. Right, I don't believe you. I don't believe you. that They don't beat it out. I thought primetime was, uh, was 9 till 11. What time was Game of Thrones on? After nine, the watershed. It? It's 9, oh, nine isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Nine. Okay. Anyway, everybody, <laughs> welcome to the show. This is a game. This is a talk show about games, <laughs> uh, game news, game development, etc. We are three blokes from the northwest, northeast. Right. <sighs> I've given up already. That's it. Some stuff from either is he? Well, he's from somewhere, some place. <laughs> He's, he's definitely yeah, he's from somewhere that doesn't have very good internet and is about ten minutes behind us on the uh, on the webcam. <laughs> he is literally like he's he's in a. a Peter Gabriel video at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> it is, look, sorry. <laughs> anyway, welcome to everybody. Have, welcome to everyone, those who are watching, regulars and new viewers. Um, this is, a, a, as I said, a talk show about games, etc. We uh, generally talk about our our things that we've played this week and then go on to gaming news and uh, throw a little list section in there for fun. We have a full house today. All of the hosts, all of the regular hosts are here. So we've got Lou, Stee, and Sam. Welcome, guys. Hi. And, I don't know uh, what that was, by the way. Most, that was kind of like a wave of karate chopping the same move. Most of us are <laughs> ill or agitated <laughs> by something tonight. So we're, we're probably going to argue with each other. We've already had a couple of arguments before Yeah, the we show. had a cracking one just before the show. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, uh, let's move on straight, straight away into... Um, into what we've played this week. Yeah. Um, is, is, sorry, is Twitch up? Uh, uh, I don't know. It's last time yes. I was on it was down. I'm just deciding whether or not I should log into IRC. Uh, I'm on IRC. There's nobody in IRC, unfortunately. But let's not worry about that because this goes on YouTube as well. Um, so, yes, uh, we, we, are, we are streaming on Hitbox for those of you who are watching us on Twitch and can't see us on Twitch because Twitch isn't working again, probably. Um Right, anyway, anyway, anybody played anything this week that they want to talk about? I've played a fair few games, but... Well, do you want to go to a stack, since you've obviously got quite a few to okay. go through? Okay, well, just before the show, and the reason we're slightly late is because, uh, well, one, we were waiting for Lou to turn up, but uh, apart from that, I, I was playing a game called Unepic, which is a 2D kind of platformer RPG type thing that we saw, we saw a few weeks ago. I can't remember where I initially saw it, but um, it appealed to me immediately from the video. It was kind of a, a bit of a funny one, tongue-in-cheek. I'm playing it now. Um, I've played maybe two hours of it and quite enjoying it so far. There's good uh, good voice acting in it. It's a, you know, it's a single-man indie dev team, 2D platformer in kind of a dungeon, and there's lots of ladders that you, you go up and down, basically, and collect different items. They've all, you know, it's a general standard RPG fair, and it's kind of tongue-in-cheek humour. But... There seems to be quite a lot of like sexual references in there, and um, one of the things I've just done is I've, I've I've went up to an orc and spoke to him. Or it looks like an orc or a goblin or something like that, and um, spoke to him. And apparently, I have to impregnate his all the orc women as part of the the quest that I'm doing. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of swearing in it as well, which I don't I don't see too often. Quite a lot of uh, effing and blinding all over the place. But again, the voice acting is quite good. It's not, you know, it, it doesn't come across as cheap or or particularly indie. In fact, and I quite like the game. There's a few little things I, you know, I'd improve. Like if you're already holding up when you go towards a ladder, you can't go up the ladder. You have to stop holding up and then press it again. It's a little bit annoying. Um, the combat the, uh, system, I think, the will synopsis get better. Doesn't sound very realistic. Um, it's not basically you you start off playing Dungeons and Dragons with your friend uh, and it's just like it's just a single screen static image with some text and, and voiceovers going on and um, you, you you go to the bathroom for a wee and you you, you just it just then turns into you you're in the dungeon <laughs> no, it, it. Just says that 
He's an average guy who's a great video game player, who loves sci-fi movies, but a novice RPG player. Any great video game player who loves sci-fi movies will have spent a good amount of time on RPGs. Okay, right, sorry, I wasn't... I haven't read that. There will be, there will be that one guy who's like, <clears throat> doesn't fit that. And he deserves to die. <laughs> Can I also just, just deconstruct something that Chris said there as well, which was go to the bathroom for a wee, so use a euphemism and say what you're going to do in there. What? <laughs> they could have went, went to the piss pot. Use a, use a use a Go to the bathroom, bathroom, which is a euphemism, and yeah. then say for a wee. You've so lost, you break you, you break the euphemism by saying what it is you're going to do in there. Doesn't matter. You, no, you totally lost me. I'm sorry. That's what I yeah, told. That's what I go to the bathroom the toilet, for. You said he went to the bathroom. So you implied he went to the toilet and then broke that illusion by saying he had a piss. I'm, it doesn't no, matter, still, Chris. Still lost. It doesn't you, matter. Me. I know you're ill. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what you mean. I'm sorry, I don't get that at it all. Had nothing to do with games. It was just maybe pedantic as usual. So let's get on with but it. I think that was a bit maybe overly pedantic there. It was. It was. If there's um, one thing we're good at. It's pedantry on this. <laughs> yeah, pop, yeah. Sometimes we could good. change it to like pedants arcade. Pedant maybe pedant ped pedantry okay. arcade. So, so is the game any good then, Chris? It, I'm really surprised. enjoying it from t from playing two. I mean, the 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 video that I originally watched it was quite action filled. <coughs> you know, there's lots of magic and stuff. So far, I've just picked up a few weapons. I think I've found my first merchant, um, and everybody's got voices as well. Everyone's got different voices. So you know, um, vo voiceovers. I, I I really I'm really enjoying it, and I think I'll keep playing it. It's got really good reviews on Steam. Yeah, yeah. Well, I can't even remember where it came from. I know there was a bit of hype about it a while back. Um, and it is an indie guy, that, um, a, a Spanish developer that's done it. And um, yeah, I'm, I mean, thoroughly enjoying it. Thoroughly enjoying it. So when you say that the voice acting's good, um, what's the what's the writing like? You say it's quite a lot of swearing in it. Is it. Does it feel juvenile or is it just, is it well written? Has it got a funny script? Um, I think there are funny segments i think it's trying to be funnier than it is it's not particularly clever it's 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 good enough for the premise i think mm. um i said i said it's i'm 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 over analyzing it i think i said it, it's got a lot of swearing in it and it's got a, quite a lot of sexual references and the fact is the, the main character that you're playing is a bit horny and stuff and you know you want to is stick it, it in everything. worth a tenner i i think i bought it last time we were talking about it and I think I got it for whatever it was on Steam. Um, it's nine ninety nine now. So, so far, Chris, I'm about fifty. Sorry, sorry, can I just stop you, Chris? It's not on uh, stream on either Twitch or Hitbox. Oh well, let's have a look. Sweet. <laughs> well, it should be. So See, um, this happens every time I try and be vocal on these shows. Well, we, don't worry, we go on YouTube. It's not the end of the world. I know. It's, 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 that's probably why we don't have any audience participation. <sighs> I'm gonna have to open the window. It's red hot in here. Right. Um, I'll tell you what. Uh, it's got yourself all hot and bothered now. Open the window. But oh. well, I said I'm I quite enjoying the uh, I'm quite enjoying the <laughs> game. Is there any need for that? <clears throat> it was a little bit. <laughs> hmm. It's telling me. Restream.io settings data loss. We apologise for losing your settings data. Please configure your stream settings once again. Wonderful. That's oh, why nice. we're not going out anywhere. So let me just ch switch the stream over to Twitch. Uh, Resonance Arcade. Hopefully, I won't have to do anything extra. A problem or occurred while authenticating. <sighs> should, this is the first time that we haven't seen. If I haven't said, is the stream working, guys? Well, I was doing other things. Yeah, it's my fault. It's my fault. Right. So, yeah, I think it's worth a tenner personally. Yeah, you could probably get it a bit cheaper anyway in, in certain unmentionable places. But Well, the way that I kind of view it is that the average cinema ticket price these days is about £8, so that gives you, like, what, two hours of entertainment. You've got a good Has point Has it given there. you more than two hours of entertainment? So far, I'm I'm about two and a half, three hours maybe into it, and I'm, I'm enjoying every second of it. Yeah, so probably worth it. But, I, I mean, I, you know, I like 2D... I'm, I'm quite enjoying my 2D indies at the yeah, moment. Yeah, sideways so. scrolling platforms. Yeah, uh, it's not. It's a bit more than a platform because it's an RPG. You know, it's got yeah. it's got progression. It's got um, build. You know, building charisma, building your constitution, that kind of thing in there. Um, if you just excuse me, I'm. Uh, I'll let one of you guys talk about yeah, a, yeah. A, a game while I sort out this problem. Well, I, I'll uh, go on, go on, Steve. 
Go on. I I haven't really played much, but uh, I seen that Car Mechanic Simulator 2015 was released, and I I did. Jo well, I actually quite enjoyed 2014. So I thought, why not? I'll give it a, a, a bash, and uh, it's it's quite entertaining. They've improved quite a lot of elements of it. They put a lot more variation into the engines and like suspension structures and things like that. Uh, they put like um, a progression system in there where you can't unlock all the garages' facilities until you get a certain amount of XP. The more XP you get, the faster you can undo bolts and stuff. So it's like, I was imagining so some guy servicing my car and going ding and then running out. <laughs> So is that the equivalent of like if you go to work at a mechanics? It's like you've got to change fifty tires over before you get to do like a oil change or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, you've got to save your time, haven't you, on, on the tills before you get the respect. Yeah. The fetch quest but for oil cans. I've um, I think I've played it for about four hours now. I've got about five thousand XP worth of experience. It's starting to get a bit samey. Well, yeah, I guess so. Is this is it, it's by the same guys who did the farm simulator, isn't it? Um, not German sure. company. Uh, give me a second. They're all they're all under the same banner, aren't they? The simulator games. They're all by. I, I thought they were by the same company, but they seem to be doing it year on year now. They're basically doing. Uh, this one's game. by Playway and Red Dot Games. Mm, so maybe. are they the guys that did like Surgeon Simulator and? No, no I think Surgeon Simulator Red was Dot like an games indie thing. Have only done Car Mechanic Simulator and Playway. Oh. I've, they're the ones who've done the Farming Simulator. Right. Ones and Helicopter Search and Rescue Simulator. Professional <laughs> Richard Hammond simulator. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, if you if you're into mechanics and kind of like, you know you, you like tinkering with cars, it's it's a way to do that without getting the frustration of seized bolts or sheared heads or getting messy. Or getting I don't messy. I don't think that would slake my desire to to work on cars because I do actually really like to. Piss around with cars. I've but I, I don't know my time. I don't think I've ever known you work on I'm a car. I was just going to say, I think you're talking out your ass there, Luke. <laughs> no, I do. I used to do it all the time. You, all, I used to, well, you, you used to open your bonnet. You used to open your bonnet and put some oil in it. I used to service it. it and stuff. Oh, you used to that's not working on a car. <laughs> but no, I used, I used to change. I used to change bits of it. And I used to. Well, I, I'm not saying I'm like a. Uh, an amateur car like, mechanic. I just used to I like. I don't consider myself one who works on cars a lot, but I've changed gearboxes, suspension, subframes. Do you work in the car industry, Steve? Yeah, and I don't. Yeah, I, I work in an office in the car industry. Right, so you still work in the car industry, though. Yeah. Yep. You work. The same. Uh, balls off. I, I once. I've changed. Like I've topped up my. Uh, Screen wash fluid a few times. That you know, I mean, I'm, I'm into oh, cars as well. That qualifies. Yeah, you're a mechanic as well. So. I, no, I just, oh Christ! <laughs> just show up, Lou. It's probably better. Well, well, I'm if anyway. you're the type of person as well who hasn't got any experience on cars, the actual, the order and what you've got to disassemble parts and put them back together again is highlighted quite a lot. So if you want to take off a wheel hub, you've got to take off the tie rod and uh, ends and the swear, uh, the swear rods and. All that type of stuff. So would it be would it be quite useful if you wanted to like learn a little bit, but you didn't want to you know fuck up your car by getting it wrong? If you want to learn how to change your brake pads, for example, I think that would be quite a good insight in how to do it. It wouldn't obviously explain all the different nuances for different cars, but essentially take the wheel off, take the caliper off, you know, that type mm. of thing. Fair enough. Well, probably more of a rough and ready guide. Yeah. Cool. Keep going, Come guys. On. Come on, someone so, else, tell us about a game. Well, I was going to talk about um, Grand Theft Auto V, which I finally got. Have you, um, you played it? I've played it. I've played about two hours of it or so, thereabouts. Um, and I've played the first person mode, and I'm quite impressed, actually. I, I see what you mean about the it, feel, it not feeling like a first person shooter directly, in that sometimes the way in which you're facing is not the way in which your body's facing so you press forward and run sideways slightly mm. so it still controls like Grand Theft Auto but it wasn't even that that view. bothered me it was the fact that it, I felt that my field of view was getting really restricted well I've changed that I, I, did, I did actually change a lot of settings I put my field of view up and things I changed um, I changed it to allow third person in the car and first person on foot it is yeah, still a bit of a well. it is still a bit of a ball ache to switch from a pad to a keyboard. Maybe my controls aren't set up as fluidly as they could be just yet, 
But sometimes I'll find myself using the control pad just to walk to the next car or something like that. Yeah, because you've already got it in your hand and you can't be yeah. bothered switching yeah. back the keyboard. Yeah, yeah no. and I, but I, not, I don't remember that being as much of a problem when I played the old Grand Theft Autos on PC because I played GTA 3 and GTA Vice City exclusively on PC. I think that the, the transition is a, a hell of a lot faster in 5, though. Hmm, so maybe. Whereas when you get out the car on 4, for example, you've got time to put your pad down and get all your mouse where so if you get out the car, you're pretty much moving then. Mm. So Sorry, yeah. I'm, can you, I'm confused. Why do you need to switch from a controller to a keyboard? Why don't you just use it's the keyboard It's extremely difficult time? to control the vehicles properly yeah. with a keyboard. Yeah, Is that because it's designed around a controller, basically? They're you analog and, yeah. It's analog just, yeah. pitch, your steering, stuff like that. But uh, what much. I've got to say is that... Um, the, the sense of power that you get from like when you're when you're shooting up the police as you normally will will do like at the end of a session you think right I'm just going to try and get five stars, it's really easy to headshot everyone. You can stand there with a pistol yeah. and blast the shit out of everyone. You, you can, can shoot people through windscreens and shoot the tires yeah. out. It's such you can a take out feeling of power with the pistol. Yeah, yeah. So that's really cool. It's not having to use the lock on system on on the uh, the pads and being able to like really just shoot shit out of people. Yeah, it's really cool, um, and I'm liking I'm liking how fast it runs. It feels really optimized. Oh, it's it did really crash cool. once and actually it completely crashed my computer. But I think there's still going to be problems like that. But it just well, it does feel polished. Since I first installed it, I had all those all those initial issues. It's been absolutely <coughs> solid as a rock since then. They have up there. Uh, they have put quite. I think they put like three patches on since then. Right. It's been solid as a rock for me. Hmm. So are you still are you playing through like the uh, the the missions again? I'm so, playing through the missions, yeah, because I'm waiting, <coughs> I'm waiting for you guys to get it so we could maybe go online and do some. Or something. A few people have mentioned that. Yeah, I'm really not actually that interested in GTA Online, although the heist no, thing sounds interesting. I'm, I'm not interested on in being part of the community. I, I just want us to go online and basically try and fuck shit up. Yeah, okay. I think it'd be a good like, thing to do with drive me. cars into each other at a million mile an hour and stuff. Just you know, just dick about. Just, just it... getting the um, getting the jets because some of the missions that you've got on GTA Online because I have played a bit of it are really really good fun. It's just that people only want to do the really boring races all the time. In my experience, I, so you've got I these never missions. Like the races. There's a mission where they're pretty dull. Like it's not a racing game; it's Grand Theft Auto. But there's a mission where you've got a, like one person's in a in the um, what's it called the Harrier jet type thing. And one of you's on a bike, and you've got to get from one part of the map to the other. The other guy's on the on the jet, trying to shoot you down. That's a really cool two-player mission. That'd nobody even wants to do it with you when you're online, and you're like, right, I'll start this mission. See, so he wants to join us. Nobody ever does. So I got was like, right, this is this could be great, but no one wants to do any of the fun missions online. It seems is, G is GTA Five cross-platform the next gen no. version? No. Yeah. So we couldn't play with Sam. No. I think well, there's only yet, Portal anyway. 2 that, that allows that. I think that's the only game that's cross-platform ever. That sucks so hard, doesn't it? Especially with, a, like, a, a... It's been released on all platforms. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, People but can just... you imagine, P like, a, you know, someone on the PC playing someone on the 360... Uh, sorry, the Xbox One, that'd you just headshot them. Their problem, wouldn't it? I mean, yeah, that'd yeah. be their problem, though, wouldn't it? And you can do yeah, that but with... It's, it's an unfair advantage. And you can't headshot people in Portal. True. <laughs> You can you can portal shoot a wall higher up on the wall. Yeah. You can make them fall into close, something. Yeah, as close <laughs> to a headshot as you're gonna get. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I'm yeah. I'm gonna get GTA Five. Still not in a rush to get it, like, but I'll uh, I will be getting it. It's the one of those things. So by the time you get it, are we gonna be sick of playing it, and then we're not gonna play it online? Well, if Lou's not doesn't want to play it online, then what's the point in? I mean, I suppose you and I can play it if you want, Steve. I probably online. will play on. Yeah, I probably will play online, but I just don't want to play it in the sense of getting involved with random. Yeah, I don't want to. I do think that. you, you kind of have off. to do those, don't you? No, no. Yeah. Like Sam said, you can pick up missions and just. Yeah, maybe maybe we should try some heist stuff and do it on. You yeah. can only do heists if you're a certain level, I think. Well, okay, we can maybe play it a bit on here. Maybe stream it one night. Me... Yeah, I'm oh. I'm up for anything. I'll I'll get it if uh, if you guys maybe this want to play it this weekend maybe. Yeah, um, yeah, I can't do Saturday. Possibly Friday. Friday's out for me, unfortunately. We'll Friday, work it out. Friday is we'll date night for me and my wife. We'll work some out. Right, so um, I've been playing for the last couple of weeks. The Last of Us Remastered. Still, uh, I'm only getting maybe a couple of hours a week and playing maybe one or two nights with my wife. 
Um, she... finished it then. You must be near the end now. Uh, no, I don't think so. What, what we're so tell to? us where you're up to, and I'll tell you near the end. <laughs> I haven't even met the giraffes yet that you were talking that's about. That's right. That's right near the end. Though. Ah, right. Um, I'm trying to think where we are. I'll try and do it without spoilers, please. Uh, Never I mind. I can't think off the top of my head. Um, Unless you've got anything else to say about it. Oh, you've not I've said. just, I've just found. Um, sorry, we've just. Um, you can close your ears if you want, Lou, if you're bothered about spoilers, but um, I've just found close the... Your ears. You know what I mean. Um, I've just found the um, the bigger fung fungal bosses, en enemy things. Oh, just yeah, the, the first, uh, first, second the one of those. Yeah, bloaters, that's it. The second one. So is that when you're in that the basement of the hotel? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, the second one. Yeah, yeah, I've just done that, in fact. I think we saved after that. All right, spoilers, done. <laughs> And then what happened, right, is we went... <laughs> then you get and, then, eyes off and then Joel got killed. Then, yeah, oh, jo shit, sorry, Luke. Joel died as fuck. You know what? I thought it was um, Ellen Page in that game, but it wasn't, was it? A lot of no, people Ellen, think that. Ellen Page was in a game by the guys who did... Um, Soul. Uh, Souls. Game, not Soul Suspect. The game was called Beyond Two Souls, but what was the game that did it before? Heavy Rain. David Cage. Quantum, she was Quantum in Quantum Leap, whatever they're called. Quantum Leap, that game developer. <laughs> Ziggy says you gotta find your dead kid or something. Um, <laughs> but anyway, didn't apparently Naughty Dog get sued or something for taking a likeness or something like that? Um, apparently, she she might have tried to file a lawsuit and it sort of went, didn't go anywhere. Right. She does. Look, she looks like it, but she doesn't look like her. Like she's not as exactly her. Right. There's a, there's a likeness to her. The same way yeah, that you could say it's, it's, when you're playing the game, you think it's her, but when you see them next to each other, the action, yeah, there's. You could make the same argument that John Marston looks a bit like uh, Clint Eastwood in The Fistful of Dollars, but it's like, well, it looks a bit like him, but it isn't actually him. So many characters look like Clint Eastwood. <coughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> so many. Yeah, that guy in Dirty Harry, he looks just like, uh, does. <laughs> just yeah. like Clint Eastwood. Such a Clint Eastwood ripper. I know. Dirty Harry, isn't Such it? Such a ridiculous. It, yeah, he Terrible. sounds like him. Um, also, as well, been playing, still been playing Dungeon Keeper. I'm getting probably more of that played than anything else but i'm finding some of these levels i think i'm on level 11 or 12 now absolutely mentally insane like really difficult there's so much variation from one level to the next i don't know if you remember guys when you played it but i i got stuck on a level where you're surrounded by lava and all your rooms have already been built and you've just got to put the things in them there's about two or three of those oh I'm, i think actually i think i know which one you mean and i'm on maybe two or three after that yeah, um, I'm not sure I completed it. There's one. There's one where you start in the middle, and you've got your you got your dungeon heart, and then as soon as you break, you're just inside. You've got like three imps. You break out one one block out, and then you're just in a huge open area, and there's loads of lava around you. And basically, the way to win the level is to like really just ha collect. I'm um, sorry, t take over as much land as you can as quickly as you can. So keep picking your imps up and putting them in places where the where it's tactical um ignore your gold get your um get all your creatures training because you're going to get attacked by an enemy as soon as possible get them to like level five or six as quickly as you can and um and then kind of build a bridge over the lava and, and steal the gold in the middle of the level otherwise the enemy just just overruns you you've got no chance um do you, did you do one where you, there was um, four or five wizards in the level that you had to find and kill. Uh, I think so. I think I did that one quite quickly, though. Yeah, that was quite an easy one. But this, it, that's the thing that the level that I did straight after that level I just explained was dead, dead easy, dead easy. You know, I, just, I don't know how I, I just played it like normal. And then the one after that again was really difficult. But I'm I'm getting stuck on ones and then flying through two or three. It's uh, it's a bit weird. So are you still enjoying it then? Oh yeah, it's awesome. It's it really, sounds like really it's the kind good. of game I'd enjoy. It's really good. I mean, I imagine playing it multiplayer would be really fun as well. Personally, I, the AI is quite. I mean, it, the, as I said, the variation of the levels is what's what's interesting about it. It's not just literally every level you have to build a dungeon and beat the enemy keeper. You've got some levels where you've got multiple enemy keepers. You've got some levels where the layout is really, really difficult to to kind of take command of. You've got other levels where the enemy rushes you. Actually, I've just done a level which was very difficult. It took me about six goes. Um, you're in the middle of the map, and there's like four caverns around you, and then uh, enemies that are about level five or six keep like each sa each one of the four caverns they keep dropping in, and then they'll start attacking you. So they'll and and on, you've got doors. Um, that they can knock down so they'll knock your doors down and then you you just have to really like 
really speed train as much as you can get your uh, your your dudes up to what you know whatever level you can get them up to and then kind of drag them out and just keep moving them around the dungeon constantly uh, you've hardly you, got any any time to using play. the workshops much um some of the levels it's better you don't use them but yes i do on the levels that appropriate are appropriate so you're using things like the fear traps and the fireball traps and all that well, because they have a big effect i've only just opened the fireball traps um up until recently i've only had the poison trap the lightning trap and oh i just opened a boulder trap as well on the level i'm on so i think you know, by the time i get the boulder traps good but the fear traps one of the best ones because it, anyone below a certain level just c can't get past it they're just right. too frightened it keeps running away oh that's that's interesting that's interesting is that not did you keep it too i can't remember the two kind of blended i think it might be two that yeah, there's a, there's a lot of slots that are still open that I haven't opened up yet in the single player, and I don't want to play the multiplayer and kind of spoil, you know, what's coming up for me. I think um, I've also tried a bit of possession as well. I got into a dragon's body, possessed it, and um, like flew over to the other side of the map just to kind of open it up and see what was what. And it, it does help a lot when you when you know what's coming, or when you at least know where the enemy is anyway. But yeah, I, I still still enjoying it. It's still annoying me the camera angle, like the I know it's that kind of pseudo three D isometric type thing, but it's you can three D. It's it's not not that's not the first it's, one. It's also it's yeah it is it's orthographic three D. You can you can spin it round the whole way. Yeah, you can spin it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I was just about to say that you can spin it round with um, delete and page down, and then you can zoom out with end. But zooming out, you don't zoom out very far. And it's really yeah. it's quite difficult it's, to figure no, it's out. It's not where Supreme Commander, Chris. No, but it's also it's also quite difficult to like figure out <coughs> when your enemies are getting when your your monsters are getting attacked, where they are, you know, where they're getting uh, attacked in the dungeon. Even though the mini maps there, it's still difficult to manage it. I think a little bit. There's one called the uh, the Word of Power Trap. That's when you want that does like splash damage two hundred. Nice, nice. Red I haven't. Stuff. I haven't really opened many um, like special monsters or anything yet. I've, I've got the Goblin Commander or whatever it is, but I haven't got the, the that big that Horn big Reaper. devil. Yeah, that's it. I haven't got him yet. You need to do a sacrifice for that. Yeah, I think I can. Uh, but I, one thing that's also quite annoyed me is that I've got to um, I've got to like two or three levels, and I've unlocked secret levels. There's uh, three unlocks that I did, but if you don't go to the secret level next on the map. And you go because I wanted to leave them all till the end. Uh, they no, just disappear, can't. and I'm like, what? What? Yeah, but they'll be they'll be, they be set so that the the right difficulty for where you are in the game. Well, you we could have improved the difficulty, bastards. But anyway, I'm a bit annoyed about that. I should really have uh, really have done that the other way around. I should have noticed the you first should, time. You should write to Bullfrog and tell them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, uh, oh, game. <laughs> game. <laughs> right. Um, so yeah, Dungeon Keeper, Last of Us. Um, Remastered. I've also been playing our game a little bit, Lou, that we did for Ludum Dare. Yeah, which... we haven't mentioned that yet, have we? No, we haven't. Um, last I've weekend. I've tried to play your game. Everyone's tried to play it. Everybody on the fucking planet has tried to play it and can't figure the controls out. Some kind of key map would have been nice. It's on there, though. That's the thing. And it wasn't when I looked. What, what do you mean, being able to rebind your keys? or? No, is it just to tell me what, what keys do what? Did you not was, put that on the front page, Luke? Because I haven't really read the front page. Was the start the... screen all blurry, Steve? No. There's a start screen which has all the instructions. Although on the web player, it's really blurry. It was the web player that I played it on. Yeah, you can't read the instructions, but the instructions are below the game because Chris put them there. Yeah. But anyway, we've had about 16 or so votes or something like that. I've, I've probably... I think I've, I've rated about six other games because I haven't had time, really. And... Um, yeah, nearly everybody has said, what are the controls? We can't figure them out. I think one of the, we haven't one had of the, time to put any prompts in there. We didn't have time to, like, polish no, the, the UI the side of things. Thing is, I think one of the biggest things is that we, we didn't get the swinging in, and a yeah. lot of people are expecting to be able to hit things, which you really should. Yeah. Uh, so I guess for a post-jam version, we'll have to get that in. I we'll keep, I keep in. opening it up and starting to do dev on it and then kind of going you know what, I want to redo the entire state management stuff. So what I've actually been doing over the last couple of weeks is I've been rewriting um, an observer slash state, state manager pattern. Um, and I've been trying to get it to a generic sense so we can basically go, when these states execute, 
execute this code when they stop executing execute this code so it'll be nice quite and quite neat i've got it there now i just need to do a bit more testing and make sure i'm happy with it let's but, yeah. try not to kill the non-devs no no sorry no i said i i learned a lot from doing that as well I said, well Actually, I'm not saying I would learn. I'd learn too much. I learned quite a lot about the physics side of things from Lou mainly, like figuring out how the you know how forces and um, uh, drag and things like that work. I taught I, you about the force. Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't really get Use on with the that force. before. Um, but yeah, I'm, I quite enjoyed doing that. It was a, it was stressful, but it was also great at the same time. Well, oh, yeah. um, speaking about physics, it's time for Lou to eat his hat. Oh, here we go Hi. again. Well, Cabal Space Program has been fully released. Oh shit, yeah, I saw that. I... Was it? Did yeah. I say that it wouldn't come out? You said that if it ever came out, you'd eat something. I can't remember what you said, Did but I... you... Yeah. I don't, I've not, I've not like, even played the game, so I don't know why I would, make, so I would make that statement. I might no, grab it now, then. I think you were just on a bit of a <laughs> rant about um, early access games, and Cabal Space Program is never going to come out, and if it does, I'll eat my front door. So. Right. Right. I'm gonna get if it. You can, if you can find the YouTube clip of that, then by all means, show me it. I will eat front door hat, whatever. I, I if I find a YouTube clip, you're gonna eat your front door. I would yeah? pay to see you eat your front door. <laughs> Isn't it made alive? of plastic as well? It's made of uh, wood. I would say melt it down and wood, plastic, metal. Yeah. Whatever. Hold on. Yeah, but it's uh, it's been fully released. Yeah, I saw that it reached 1.0. Cool. Up for that. Uh, I'm, I'll, I'm gonna get it now. So there is hope for early access. It's got fe yeah. female kerbals in it, isn't it? Yeah. And uh, 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 improved um, atmosphere flight model with uh, re entry heating, stuff like that. Yeah, maybe. I don't. It seems, sounds like a bit of a time suck to me. It is, but aren't all games to an extent? To a, like a big time suck though. Like people, uh, I think one of the reviewers has put like 800 hours, 800 hours into it on. Um, Steam that's all. I yeah. don't think yeah. I've, people I've who put like six thousand hours in uh, civilization. I don't think I've been alive eight hundred hours, <laughs> let alone. Well, there's only really the Civ, there's football manager, and now there's this, isn't there? Kerbal Space. No, there's car mechanic simulator, farming simulator, yeah, farming sim, yeah, which <laughs> uh, we haven't yeah. gone back to yet. I, I, no. I know you probably that not guy was missing but... his eggs, wasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Looking hand delivered eggs. <laughs> all right, Mister. You want an egg? He's one egg. One egg. He's one it egg. Was, it That's what he was doing. At time. He was picking an egg out of a chicken's <laughs> bum, right? Running to the village, running to the village, not getting in a tractor and driving. Running to the village with this one egg, giving it to the shopkeeper, running back to the uh, next chicken, getting another egg. <laughs> it's just like there must be a more efficient way of doing it than this. You were getting fifty dollars an egg, though, weren't you? I was getting fifty dollars an egg for hand delivering the egg. eggs. That's amazing. <laughs> what fucking economy is that? I don't know. <laughs> a a very egg-based economy. <laughs> Eggs are worth more than their weight in gold. <laughs> yeah. Supply and demand. So we were getting like eight thousand dollars for, or ten thousand dollars for a, a truckload of grain, uh, or canola. I think we were doing canola, as well. Canola, yeah, it was, yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, I, I wanted to. I, I haven't played any of these, but um, uh, within the week, I sent everybody a text. I think, well, everybody, I sent Steve and Lou a text about the multiplayer humble bundle uh, that was out. I did I look into it. Um, that homebrew vehicle simulator, uh, the homebrew vehicle sandbox, I've seen before, and I've I did read and watch quite a few uh, YouTube reviews of it. And uh... well, yeah, that's just one of the games on there. But there's a couple of others that actually do appeal to me quite a lot. The Primal Carnage looked really cool. I've got it. I bought the bundle anyway because you know it was whatever ten quid or whatever ten dollars. <clears throat> Primal Carnage is basically dinosaurs versus humans, and you can play either. And the the video was just basically Tyrannosaurus Rexes like running around eating people's heads off, like chomping people's heads off, and um, getting shot to hell by about. 20 marines or something i thought i thought it was quite novel i quite like the idea of it yeah i'm looking at that now it looks like um it looks looks crazy actually i quite like the look of it, it but is it depth where you your sharks versus humans is it we're starting yeah. to see this 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 kind of surging asymmetrical multiplayer which is quite cool i do like that i know it's a bitch to balance but yeah. i like the idea that there's one team with a completely different way of reaching the objectives than the other well, it's, it's got a Left 4 Dead that. kind of tang to yeah. it, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Left 4 Dead 2, specifically, where you... I, I really enjoyed that, though. I really, really enjoyed that. Uh, the Playing the two-player Left 4 Dead 2. 
I, it, it appealed to me more than doing what, the co-op. Versus? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, I really loved it. Versus Left 4 Dead is sublime if you can get the players for it. So how come you've not been wetting your pants for Evolve or something then? You're just not interested in that particular game? I mean, Cause it's, just gonna be another, that. it's just going to be another, again, Time Sink, it's just going to be another Destiny or another brute force from years ago. What do you say, Destiny? I, the reason, what puts me off massively, Evolve, is the advertising campaign that went with it. Like, any game that has to be pushed that hard probably isn't that good. It, that kind of reminds me of Titanfall. Mm. Mm. In this I, band, it's more, it's more of a buy this game because it's cool, not buy this game because you're going to be playing it in a few years' time. Well, are there still people playing Destiny? They don't there play are. many other games, but they play it's Destiny to hell. Dried up yeah, a lot though, hasn't it? It's because it was a fad game. It's it was probably a flop, bungee it? fanboys as well. Yeah, I mean, compare that to Halo and how well Halo did. You know, yeah. Destiny's kind of really flopped. Bungie I think they made money on it continually. though. Well, yeah, they will have, but you know, it's also I think the biggest budget of any game ever, isn't ever. it? But when they combine the marketing and the yeah, Cause that had a, that had a big marketing thing to it as well. Destiny, from what I remember. Um, it, it's the number. No, sorry. Uh, it was the number six most expensive game. And it was. Did we uh, talked about this already. What's what's the top of that list? Call of Duty Modern Warfare Two. No, Grand Theft Auto Five has gone down to number two spot. Ah, Cod, okay. Modern Warfare Two is the most expensive. Just Seriously, point. the thing is, though, you compared the top two there, and you got right. So, whatever you say about Call of Duty Modern Warfare multiplayer, you might enjoy it. It's got like a four-hour story campaign. GTA Five, it's got a same similar budget, or it's a bit lower, and it's like a sixty-hour game with this huge like world that the, you can um, go around in. It's just ridiculous. The, the marketing budget for that game was four times the development cost. 50 million for the development cost, 200 million for the marketing cost. Is that Call of Duty you're talking about? Call of Duty, yeah. And I think yeah. this is kind of like, this is what's put me off Evolve, because I'm sure Evolve had a huge marketing budget. It was on <coughs> all the bus stops in, in my local yeah. town. Yeah. Like, you know, you know what, what game goes on bus stops? I, I, I'm with you there to an extent, Lou. I think uh, when a game is advertised to hell or when a game is going to be popular, you know, going to be big, it's not just because it's popular then I'm not interested in it. It's because I know that the people that it'll attract will be the, the kind of, <clears throat> sorry to say this, I'm probably going to upset some people, but the kind of mindless morons that don't really play games, if you know what I mean. They just play four different games and that's it, you know, and and they, they play with the mates online and they just go on and swear at people and just be idiots to each other. Mm. Whereas I like a little bit of a community in a game and I like playing with my friends if I'm going to play something. You know, uh, I think the problem is anyway. now that you've, you've got you've got the hype train and you've got you've got a lot of games which are getting really good at marketing themselves pre-release, like mm -hmm. Titanfall. You know, Titanfall was a flash in the pan. People yeah, played it for it about really two was, weeks. Yeah. And but but when it came out, it was like, whoa, look at this! And it was all videos everywhere. And everyone was going mad about it. And it just disappeared, like it overnight, just it, disappeared. It didn't look that appealing. So I liked the idea of getting in mechs and stuff, but you know what? Killzone three, <laughs> two, two or three did that. <laughs> There's been a game released for every year for the past 15 years where you can get into mechs. Um, okay. <laughs> but I said, I said I've said i I've played games that have had much more interesting concepts than just run around and shoot each other, you know, than uh, mm. and, and get in mechs, you know. Um, Battlezone 2045 or whatever it was, that was, I quite enjoyed 47, that. 47, wasn't it? That was, that was a, again, as you... To, to coin your phrase there, Lou, that was a flash in the pan as well when it when it came out. But I quite enjoyed that game. I thought it was a bit different. But yeah, Greg enjoyed that as well. Yeah. Um, anyway, there was one other game on that humble bundle that that stuck out to me, and it was Blade Symphony, and uh, and that's like a it's a sword fighting game. Um, I don't know if it's an indie game actually or not because it looks quite polished, quite nice. But it's basically a sword fighting game where you kind of choose the cuts that you're going to do, and you can upgrade all of your all of your weapons and stuff, and it looks interesting. I haven't played it yet, but it looks like it'd be that fun. That looks cool, yeah. When you say fighting game, do you mean like one-on-one -on -one fights, or do you mean it's a game where you fight through various enemies Well, from what I could, from what I could tell, it looked like a 1v1. However, it looked like you could have multiple people in an arena fighting each other. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> it reminds me a bit of... What was that game that we were talking about before, Sam? The, um, the ninja game on the PlayStation. Um, Tenchu? Tenchu, yeah. It kind of looks a bit like that. Third person... Well, Tenchu had nothing like that. It just had a button bashing, really, for you. Yeah, it wasn't, wasn't a... Yeah, but it's... 
complex it, Looking combat. at the levels and stuff, it, it does look kind of it's like you, you don't just fight in an arena, you fight in levels. Yeah, okay. I, I, it's I a bit quite, like chivalry as well. I quite like the look of it, and I thought, again, if you, if you guys did manage to get hold of that multiplayer bundle, there's a, a couple of others on there. I mean, I think, was it God Factory Ring, Wingman? That looked like an RTS game, I think it was. Um, God Factory? Yeah. Um, there's also God Mode as well, which looked like it had a bit of a comical kind of single-player campaign in there as well. Um, I, I, I got it anyway because I was quite interested in it, but if I if I play them and I, I think they're any good, I'll let you know and we can... You can probably get them for next to nothing, to be fair. In fact, they'll probably be on the humble humble store for next to nothing. Mm. But yeah, apart from that, I haven't played much else. That's me. That's me done. Yeah, um, the only thing I really got managed to get in was GTA Five. Yeah, on, the Sam. only thing I've been playing is Bloodborne. Just, but I've not got anything much to say about it. That uh, anybody who's either not played it or has already played it doesn't already know. Like, it's it's really good, and it's what it's it's getting really fucking weird like all the souls games are kind of weird but this one's just going really weird and it's the more you play it the more like you, the more confusing it becomes and not not in terms of like where you have to go or anything because it's that's you can kind of figure that out but just the world and the, the lore and everything is really fucking bizarre and in strange very lovecraftian even though i've not actually read any hp lovecraft i know enough about his tropes to know that it's very lovecraftian in its nature with like other beings from the other from other dimensions and and you have to have certain like level of insight to comprehend them and all this kind of stuff and it's yeah it's mad plus you have to smash stuff up with your big knife all the time it's good mm. <laughs> um, that's it for me I've only been playing that okay <clears throat> um so am I presuming then that you n no one else has played anything else then? No. I've played a little bit more of um I forgot what it's called. Give me a sec. Uh, Absolutely no preparation. You're all Cities Skylines. Yeah. Any How's any that going? Better. It's alright, um I downloaded a couple of mods to let you unlock the entire landscape. Because I had it in my head that I wanted to try and make a completely carbon neutral city. <laughs> So I was gonna. Uh, so basically, I structured the landscape in such a way there was a big ravine, I had a river running through, a quite a high power one, so I could build a dam. Um, that took a few goes to get right, which is a bit frustrating because you've got to let the water build up. So in order to figure out whether the dam's going to work, you need to spend at least like about an hour on it to let the water backfill, and then find out it's not high enough, then you got to start again. But it's alright. The traffic system works quite well. Um, once you get your head around it. Um, yeah, it's... Is it another flash in the pan? Because it's another game that I seem to have seen a lot of hype about, and then it's kind of gone away again. It's It depends what you're after. Um, there's a lot of micromanagement involved. Um, See, there's uh, a micromanagement that I didn't like in The Sims games. Yeah, uh, I, I, I like the city building part of it. I kind of just want to build a massive city, but it's one of these things where in, in order to build a big city, you've got to start with a small one and make it functional, otherwise it won't spread properly. Yeah. So it's not as if you can say, right, here's my big 25 kilometer map, I'm going to put the industrial zone here, the residential zone here and the thingy, because the people won't drive to it to reach it, so you'll have loads of factories crying out for people to work, and loads of people here saying we haven't got any jobs. Like, well, fucking drive. <laughs> get there so you've got to kind of do it quite in quite small chunks and then expand and expand and expand hmm. it's okay. it, 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 it's alright <laughs> it's alright so yeah I'm, it's one of those it's, it's on again on my list it's on my wish list but I, I can never I've got so many games now. I've got so many that I haven't played, and I'm trying to get through them. I'm trying to like play at least a little bit of each one to see which ones are worth investing more time in, you know. And it's difficult to to say, right, I, I, I really want to try that game, but that's going to get take up at least two or three hours of my time to actually appreciate it, you know. Is it multiplayer, City Skylines? Nah, nah, bollocks then. But if you look at Steam, I mean, it's got overwhelmingly positive feedback for yeah. it. And uh, I'm sure that I've only kind of scratched on the surface because I haven't actually went through the single player. I went straight into sandbox mode, which is kind of the thing that appeals to me about it. 
like building a city. Mm. Right, mm. so let's move on um, to the way of the exploding list. Boom! Was that poo that, falling that off the ceiling? Poo? It was so <laughs> such a big explosion, such an awesome list that poo came from the ceiling. That intro has become slightly more elaborate, hasn't it? Than it, it has. Was. <laughs> I've got uh, I've got a couple of ideas for lists. Cool. I've, I've got one written down, but uh, it's That's a bit it. shit. So, <laughs> well, my first idea was the top five reasons why I lose a cunt. <laughs> In games, you, only, you, you put your hand up and uh, did that though. So, uh, the second one, uh, which is kind of around a delivery that I got, and I'm sure Lou got as well last week, was the top five Amiga games. Yes. Delivery. Yes. Oh, yeah, I got played uh, an Amiga. Is this a yeah. Kickstarter thing that you got? Yeah, yes. the uh, the visual compendium uh, finally got delivered last week. Cool. For the Amiga. It's very, very nice. Very. It sick. is very nice. Um, uh, what level back in did you do, Lou? Uh, I can't remember. I got I got the um, the the stickers and a metal clip and a badge and all sorts of stuff with it. Yeah. Did you get the, the um, another world poster? Yeah, and the CD. Yeah, the Shadow of the Beast CD remix. Yeah. Yeah, Shadow of the quite, Beast. It's yeah, just, it's quite cool. It, 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 it's so much panpipes that it will dissolve your face. <laughs> <laughs> not, he's not really panpipes though. It's uh, what was it? What was the um, the audio tool on Mega's called? I've forgotten now. Uh, Pro Tracker was yeah. it? Yeah, it was Tracker, wasn't it? On Workbench, wasn't it? Was Workbench the main OS or the? The Workbench main. was no well the OS it was kind of the ancillary OS it was the thing that you could run programs in and multitask yeah yeah multitask but you had to yeah. A disc. yeah he did yeah oh anyway Ooh, cool R R but um what was what was the other one then top uh, top top five Amiga games top five Amiga games Sam oh, well, can Sam, you contribute to this I've, one I've I've never played an Amiga. <laughs> Okay. Ah, number one, top five. number one for me is easily Monkey Island, the original. That to me is an Amiga game because that's where I first played it. I don't know if it was on PC before Amiga. Do you know? Can you remember? Monkey Island will have been. Oh God, I don't know. Didn't it get simultaneous releases back then? I'm not sure. Not sure. I but, think they did. They, they were they, they like they, they released them on all the platforms at the same time because they always used to show like the screenshots from. Them and the IBM PC compatible screenshot was always a bit shit compared to the Amiga one. We've got a few, um, we've got a few people coming in chat now, and uh, uh, sorry, sorry about uh, you coming in late, guys. We're about an hour into the show. Unfortunately, we had some, uh, we had, had again had some issues with Twitch. Restream.io decided to delete all our settings, so I've I spent about ten minutes at the beginning of the show trying to set all the stream keys back up. So, we're, but we're on now. We're on our list section. We've been talking about our games that we've played. But uh, thank you for coming I've in. Whacked a link into to the um, to the the thing that we got so you can have a look at it it is uh it's a very beautifully done book mm, very nice so i would I, i'd also like to put shadow of the beast on there because i i is it shadow of the oh no altered beast altered beast was that an amiga altered game beast. though well that was the first was mega drive game that was mega drive yeah, yeah it came it? on the spectrum oh, yeah but it was the very first, first mega drive game all right well worms then in that case because yeah. uh, again that's where i first played worms the original Played Worms See, 2 as well, but I wasn't Amiga that keen games, on it. I, I really enjoyed Walker. That Walker. was a great game. Sideways scrolling yeah, shooter. Yeah, sideways scrolling shooter. You were in like a big walking robot Blue. thing. You aimed with the mouse. And yeah, was and you walked of, with like, the keyboard. Yeah, there was loads of little guys running around in tanks and stuff, and you just shot the shit out of everything. Oh, you could stand on that. Yeah, that was really cool. That was an interesting idea and well executed. You see, I didn't. I didn't have an Amiga as a kid. I've got three now. No, did I? Steve did. <laughs> uh, I used to go around my friend's house to play them. So there was uh, my, the other one that I've got to say then uh, in that case because it's one of the only ones that I played was um, uh, the Indiana Jones City of Atlantis. Yes, the the the, the, the something something of Atlantis. Yeah, it was isometric, wasn't it? Uh, no, it was a t uh, it was a two D kind of pseudo two D. Fate of Atlantis. Fate of Atlantis. There you go. Yeah, 
And I remember getting stuck down a bloody hole at one point and not being able to figure out how to get out of it. I'm sure there was a way, but we it was right near the end of the game and uh, we, we we went down a ladder or and it broke or something and we couldn't figure out how to get out. Oh, oh. yeah, it's just like a point-and-click Monkey Island style thing, isn't it? It yeah. was uh, isometric on the Sinclair Spectrum. It was a completely different game. Well, there was... Um, there was. I remember playing this on my old home computer. There was a Last Crusade Indiana Jones game that was like an isometric point-and-click adventure. Mm. I don't know if you could maybe get it. Can, were they around at the, at the same time? Or the I'm looking at screenshots. The, so on certain platforms, Fate of Atlantis was an isometric sort of wander about game. Well, um, just because I'm, I'm losing the will to, to live at the moment, uh, Turrican. Turrican 2. Turrican. Turrican awesome. was, yeah, as well. was it mm. Was it 2 that was on the Amiga? Both were. Uh, but Turrican 2 were. was the better of them. Because I think I yeah. played Turrican possibly on the Commodore 64 first. It was on all platforms again. I think a lot of the Amiga games were on the 8 bits as well. Yeah, but there was so much better on the. Uh, on oh the yeah, the, the Amiga was at the time the Amiga was the best version of pretty much every game. Yeah, it was, and, and to be fair, the Commodore sixty four in my eyes, I know you're going to disagree with this, but in my eyes was the best of that generation because of the well, the graphics were better in general. The graphics were better on the Amstrad CPC than all of them, but that wasn't uh, the best. It was really slow. Even no one ever ever had an Amstrad CPC though. Nobody had a, the Spectrum was awful though. Let's let's Screw agree you. that the graphics on the spectrum was off. Graphics were well, faster you, to them. When you played Dizzy, you went behind or in front of a box, and Dizzy turned into the colour of the box. For fuck's sake! Or oh, yeah. the box turned into the colour of Dizzy. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, it's usually. I, uh, it was I usually I, Dizzy give way to the backgrounds. Yeah, they're both which, as bad as each other. Aren't they, let's be fair. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. in fact, no, well, if Dizzy. Seen that, I used to have a Commodore sixty four, and Lou had a, uh, a ZX eighty one. I had and, a plus two. Yeah, yeah, the plus two, sorry. Um, and, I don't know. We, there, was, there was not a lot of conflict between. We used to play different games on each of them. I, well, yeah. I did. I went. I, one of my friends had a, a Spectrum. No, an Am Amiga. Oh, my God, what was it? It was a little thing. It was a little thing like that. Black or white. Kids. It's kind of black, I think. It'll have been a 48K Spectrum or... Um, yeah, and it, had, one. it had like multi colours as a logo at the top right that's or something. A, that's, like that. a, that's a 48k, yeah. Right, okay, so he, he had one of them. Uh, I, I One of my other friends had an Amiga 500 or 800 or 1200, I can't even remember. And I had a Commodore 64. Amiga 800? Eh? <laughs> Amiga 800, that's just made up that. Was it? Oh, okay, I can't five, remember. Six, five, six, 12, 12 and 15. Didn't yeah. I say six? Oh, whatever. No. Anyway, um, or you could upgrade it yourself, in which case I, I had an Amiga 1000. <laughs> Because I put a 512k expansion card in. Um, th there was. Uh, what about Super Frog? You remember playing Super that? Super Frog was actually quite fun. It was. It, <coughs> it was, was. It was very fluid as well as I remember. Cause you should go quite fast. Super Frog. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I rem I'm, I'm looking at the screenshots now, and it was. Um, I, I, oh, Zool as well. Zool was good. Zool was a tiny chump chumps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There was a lot of times at the time because there was also um, uh, there was uh, James Pond uh, Robocod that had a lot of uh, that had penguin biscuits in it. Yeah, yeah. I played I played that on the Amiga first. Played I think that. Chaos Engine played that on the Amiga first, yep. but it's actually now we played it again. Not very good at all. Uh, cannon fodder on the Amiga was yep. amazing balls. Another world flashback. Another world, yeah. Um, Alien Breed, if you remember playing that, that was a uh, it, it was a top down one that. Um, Sensible World of Soccer and Speedball 2. I never played Sensible World of Soccer I, and I should have done because it's apparently it's one of the best soccer games ever made. Sensible ever. World of Soccer is the only football game that I ever really enjoyed playing. Yeah, yeah. Same here. I hated every Speedball game. Speedball 2 just quality. And Fuck Brutal Sports Football, that was, that was just hilarious. I take all of your games and rage you the 3D construction kit. Oh god! That was 35 <laughs> quid when that came out. That was amazing, that game. Oh, well, it wasn't a game, was it? But... There was that, and there was um, there was a Commodore version of that, I think. Uh, it was a, yeah, it was again. It was on all platforms. The adventure uh, construction kit or something like that. You could make adventure no, that was games with it. That was graphic adventure cre uh, creator. Some like, no, no. Yeah. Mine was, it was called construction kit something. There was uh, adventure mm -hmm. construction kit. There was one cool. game as well, which is the first game that managed to induce motion sickness on me. That was stunt car stunt racer. Car racer. Yeah. <laughs> oh God, that's yes. I played that on the Commodore. Stunt car racer. 
I'm pretty sure it was out on the Commodore. Yeah, it was. And the Spectrum. On the 64? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm it pretty was, sure. Because yeah. I remember playing it on a, from a tape on my, at my mate's house. Because he had it on a, a rip tape. Uh, his dad used to go, he was dad was a builder or something, and they used to swap tapes at, at oh, work. Yeah. That looks absolutely pathetic compared to the Amiga. <laughs> it is, the frame rate is so awful on it as well. You press forward and it goes, Nyeh. Buggy Boy, there's another one. I remember for ages, me and Lou were trying to do the uh, the loop to loop bit, and we kept knacking it up because we weren't reading the sign on the way towards it, which told you a speed limit. You had to go at that speed in order to make it round without falling off. How about one of the worst, most awful games on the Amiga ever is God's. Do you remember that? It wasn't that almost bad. There was worse games than that. Almost impossible to complete. Almost impossible not to die at certain points. Oh, myth broken, fundamentally on broken. Oh, myth was brilliant. Yeah. Sand oh, sorcerer. Um, history in the making. Populous. What a beautiful game. Lemmings. Creatures. Creatures Commodore 64, wasn't it? There was oh, an Amiga version. It was, it was better on the Amiga. There it um, is. There's that game that I was talking about before. Um, that when I was talking about the fighting game on the on the Commodore, the Amiga or whatever, Body Blows. Do you remember it? I remember Body Blows. Blows. I remember Body Blows. Yeah. E uh, that, that, was, that caused a massive stink when it came out. Everyone went mental about. Didn't it. Didn't have a bit of blood in it or something. Uh, it, just because, like you know, it was like, look at the graphics. It was like <laughs> Rainbow <laughs> Islands. You can't you can't deny Rainbow Islands. Desert Strike. Yes. Yes. Desert Strike was amazing for the Amiga. Anyway, we're just listing all the games on the Amiga now, aren't we? We've got more than five. They yeah. Definitely. There's way more. Top, top five. But I'm, I'm still, top I, I think I had the most fun out of ev any game on the Amiga playing the Monkey Island games by far. I think, to be honest, we had the most fun on the Amiga playing with Deluxe Paint. I was just going to say <laughs> that, yeah. Of all the things that we enjoyed on the Amiga, Deluxe Paint was the thing we used the most. Fair enough. That, fair that enough. or Extreme Violence. Extreme Violence, yeah, but that wasn't a published game, was it? It was like a shareware thing or something, wasn't it? Or a freeware thing. Anyway, let, anyway us, yeah. let us move on to the next section of the show, which is gaming news, releases, etc, etc. Um, I just want to just make a few mentions about games that I've seen that are coming out that I'm, I'm excited about. I, I, there's a few stories about these as well, but um, Shadowrun Chronicles is is i think it's out or it's coming out soon and it's another kind of isometric 3d kind of shadow run returns type thing but it looks like mm. it's multiplayer which really appeals to me i love the shadow run universe in general uh, i don't know if any of you guys know anything about it at all uh, i know it came out on the snes didn't it originally. yeah well originally it was a bot um it was a uh, like a Oh my god, Dungeon Keep, Dungeon dra Dragon, Dungeons and Dragons. It was like a Dungeons and Dragons type game. Um, and there's comics and there's all kinds of, you know, there's a whole subculture of kind of cyberpunk, um, kind of, the, the, the a whole point of the Shadowrun universe is the Shadowrunners are kind of mercenaries for hire, hire, and they've got a combination of, you know, guns, melee, and magic as well. And um, mm. it just, it, it, really appealed to, it really, really appealed to me. The story on the SNES game was really, really dark. And from there, I got into it <coughs> quite a lot. And I've been following the, you know, the new releases of the games. There's, there's been a few that are, are pretty awful, but I've, I've enjoyed Shadowrun Returns. There's a few bugs in it, uh, like game stopping bugs where you, you basically can't get past a point until you reload the game and try again about seven oh, times. Yeah. But um, I think they've probably fixed them up now, but. Um, but this one, this one appeals to me. I'm, uh, I'm going to keep my eye on it, uh, Shadowrun Chronicles. Uh, the other one that I wanted to talk about is Witcher 3, which I've got a free copy of. I've got my GTX 980, and I've got a free copy with it. So I'm really looking forward to that. After all of the stuff I've been reading, after all of the advancements, that people are comparing it to Skyrim. Um, people are saying that it's it's better than Skyrim. I mean, I know you don't exactly know this yet, do you? you, you can't tell until it's out. I think I'm going to forego playing one and two, and I'm just going to go straight to three. I think because um, I'm hoping when's the control uh, system is going to be better. And when's it released? And possibly give May. two a go because they made a lot of improvements on the control system. The two. Yeah, but one one got a bit boring for me. It was a little bit like oh, this, I've got to walk all the way over there, and then I have to walk all the way back. And yeah, it's, it's like, it did take quite a lot of time to to actually get anywhere, unless you completely ignored every side mission and just went to the like, to the main story. Yeah, and even that, I've, I felt I just felt a little bit right. I, I, one one of the sections I did, I, you started in a, or you started um, in like a little camp thing, 
and then you had to go out into like kind of wilderness area and there was a few side quests to do but you had to basically get through a gate and get into a town it's right at the beginning of the game and yeah. i'm in the town now but it took so long to get in the town i was like for fuck's sake can i just open the door you just fucking let me in forgot <laughs> oh, back and forth back and forth screw that but anyway i'm i'm quite looking forward to Witcher three because one i've already got it two i'm kind of hankering for a new rpg 3d rpg and and do, do, Steve, do you think I'm going to need to do two first, or from a story point of view? No, not at all. No, yeah, they'll you probably pick up three straight off. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll, I'll you know do the that. backstory anyway. He's a witcher. Yeah. He's a bit older in this one. <laughs> so Sorry. are they are they not connected then? Are one and two are they separate adventures, or is it one? Yeah. Um, there's actually uh, there's a series of uh, of books and short stories. There's uh, there's quite a lot of them written by uh, I forget his name now, a Polish author, and they don't follow any type of timeline it's just lots of individual stories a bit like yeah, sort I, of indiana jones where each films its own kind of thing it kind of yeah of. i'm not yeah. entirely sure of the story of three but if it's anything like the novels one and two and one and two sorry then there won't be anything you'll need to know apart from obviously the basics of who he is and what he does is it pc exclusive the witcher series I don't think so. One is. <clears throat> I yeah, wouldn't one bother with one anyway. It's, as well. The control system in one is just a bit... To me, it feels laborious. It, uh, not just the, the running around in the in the game. The the fact that you're literally yeah, just hack, clicking. Hack. Hack. Yeah, slash. and then you have to time it when it when it turns into a flame and uh, to yeah. get a special... It's like, what? It's not even... It doesn't even feel like a hack and slash. It just feels like a point and click that's kind of 3D. But not... Yeah. I, 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 no, I didn't like it. Didn't feel like there was any challenge really, apart from frustrating challenges when you you fought certain people in bar fights, like that butter beer, butter bean, or whatever his name is. You know what? All right, I, I fought him about two million times, died two million times. Talked to you about it, and you said, "Oh no, you just need to keep, you just need to fight him like normal." Went back into it, did it ex first time, the next time. I, I had, didn't change my tactic. Didn't change anything about what I was just doing. Punch him when it flashes. That's all you've got to say. That's what I was doing before, but he was just knocking me out every time, and I was like, "Fucking fat bastard!" <sighs> Excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to all the fat bastards out there. I am one too, by the way. Um, right. So, yes. Anybody got any? Before I go into my huge list of of news stories, anyone else um, got anything well, you want to talk one, about? One I want to point out, and this is something that you might be quite interested in, Sam, is uh, Titan Souls has finally been released. So Titan Sorry? Souls, it, Titan Souls. Um, I heard about this, and I can't remember what it it's is. It's basically it's it's imagine it, it's kind of the boss fight sort of stuff from um, from Dark Souls, but in a two mm. D top down. Sort oh of, uh, yes, yes. I've I've got this yeah. is in my wish list, and I've had um, I've had it I've had my eye on it for a while. It's something a bit, something a bit like um, um, Shadow of the Colossus, really. So you're basically a character who's got a bow with one arrow, and you've got to wander around this world and basically pick fights with bosses. And the bosses are all really, really well designed in the way that you fight them. They're really difficult, and they're also they've they've been the way they've been developed is that that really obvious ways that you think would work to kill them, uh, like quash. They're really clever in the way that they've been thought out yeah. it's it's it stinks yeah the, the when you look at it it absolutely stinks of zelda but it doesn't play yeah. that way i don't think from no what it's I've not seen it's nothing heard. like zelda it's essentially just a boss stomper um but you've only got one arrow and when you fire the arrow you've got to draw it back to you and also when you aim in the arrow you can't move so there's very harsh sort of um limitations placed on you but it's all about the boss fights and about that how you pretty cool, them. it, it yeah. looks awesome but I've i don't think i'll enjoy it quite a lot of the baddies well it's quite a lot of the bosses that i've seen so far have actually appeared in zelda exactly but <laughs> they're different how you how you attack them apparently i the, the problem i have with these kind of games is that i'm not that keen on boss fights and if it is a game about boss fights i mean even shadow of the colossus i think i got them out maybe five in and i just went you shit. probably won't like it if that's the case then but i've been yeah. looking at this one for a while i love the look of the game and i also love the idea of the game and i've not played zelda so i don't think the the, the fact that bosses are from zelda will be a problem for me well they're, they're, they're certainly not attacked and uh dealt with in the same way as zelda because zelda basically yeah. is attack the flashing bit you know yeah. lock on in the 3d games lock on and hack them with your sword at the right time Isn't, it's usually attack the flashing bit with the, with the weapon you just found in that dungeon earlier yeah 
in Zelda. That's the general formula. If you had the hook shot, shoot it with the hook shot. Yeah. Job done. Exactly, yeah. You, you, but this, um, right. this looks really good. This looks like it might... Uh... Oh, it's on PS4. Right, I'm getting that. <laughs> <laughs> that looks like definitely my cup of tea. Yeah. I thought it's you might on, like it's on my wish list and it's one of them, you know, I'll get maybe when it's cheap somewhere. Maybe It's cheap somewhere. I just bought it cheap somewhere, but I won't say where that was, but okay. you know where it is. <laughs> <clears throat> Oh, that's a good one, Chase. I would not, probably wouldn't have even known about that if you hadn't brought it up, so looks cool. Thanks. Yeah. Well, I think we've talked about it a few times on the show, actually, but like, again, I've mentioned you it haven't before, been around but yeah. Alright, so. oh, okay. I just must have blanked it out or forgotten about it. Um, right, so 2K Australia, developers of Borderlands, the pre-sequel, have closed down citing high operational costs in Australia. Yeah, I, I saw wanted this. To, I wanted to ask about that because... Um, what are the games of 2K Australia done? Because I know 2K is a bit like Ubisoft, didn't it? They've got the 2K Montreal, not 2K Montreal, 2K Marin, 2K Australia. So they've got different shops set up all over. So is that the only game of note that they've developed? As far as, far as, you're as I'm aware, of? yeah. As far as I'm aware, that, that was it. That was their baby. And I think basically the, the future of their studio rested upon that being a good game. That's just why it got so much hype again. Lots of hype for a game which wasn't as good as Borderlands Two. What was that? Um, what was that company called that developed um, L.A. Noir? That was an Australian company that Bungie, also went under. Uh, Bungie, it's, not Bungie. Fucking hell. Uh, ba- bon- bon- Bondi. Bondi. Ban Ban Bondi. Is that it? Yeah, Bondi Studios. They were, yeah, they're, they were actually, actually developed it, and they closed down, and, and you know, as soon they, as it was released as well. They closed down because the studio lead was a dick. That's why they yeah. closed down. He was a proper bell end apparently to work with and a proper bell end to all the suppliers and everything else uh, and that's that's a well known industry thing I'm not <laughs> I don't think I'm uh, stepping on any toes <clears> there <throat> according to this list uh, 2k Australia were involved in Bioshock Bioshock 2 uh, uh, well that's that's a 2k game so they, they probably had a, something to do with it they'll, yeah, yeah, yeah they'll, 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 they'll have the multiplayer like... part of it or something maybe the Bioshock yeah, I've, I've done some work just on like outsourcing some of the texture work and modelling so and stuff like that. Wasn't Borderlands Gearbox? Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so two K on Gearbox? Yes, I do. Yeah. Right. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Uh, they own quite a lot of stuff. But haven't Gearbox now. closed down now? No, Gearbox is still going. They're still making. Um, they're still making that game. That I can never remember the name of Battleborn. Ba- Bioshock. That's... Then but, wh- who's uh, the studio that did Bioshock? Uh, the first one was 2K Marin, wasn't it? Ah, uh, Christ! No. no, it was a studio that's just closed down. I think it was Ken Levine, wasn't it? It no, was, yeah. Is it? It's just 2K, 2K Boston. It? 2K Boston. No, 2K okay, Boston. this isn't what I'm thinking of. Then there's, I'm sure the Bioshock studio has closed. Oh, it might be, it might be what I'm thinking. Oh, I don't know. Hasn't, hasn't, hasn't Ken Levine left? Is that wasn't that? He's doing indie story? stuff now. Yeah, he's on yeah. the he's on the Kickstarter bandwagon. I think now and. So that, like every next other bio, ne- that next shock game, whatever it will be. Uh, yeah, it'll be a spiritual successor, I think, uh, that they, they said it to. Irrational Games did Bioshock Infinite, which is what you might be thinking that of. Might they're be also it, yes. sell 2K. They've closed down, though. They've been shut down. Digital Extreme has done Bioshock 2. Okay, so everyone did everything then, yeah. basically. Uh, okay. <clears throat> okay. Complicated. Now, I, I haven't got a link for this, but um, I read somewhere, on, well, not read, on the front of GameSpot.com, uh, there's a there's an article, sorry, there's you know, they've got like a bumper kind of video that says these are the big stories this week or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. They were talking about somebody somewhere has, has proclaimed that WoW-style MMOs are now dead. Now... I that kind is of a bold agree. claim. I kind of agree with this. I think I think they are dying a death. Because people want quick paced kind of 40, 40, 50 minute playthroughs and then you're done. You know, like I'm talking about the destinies of the world. That's an MMO, but it's very much you play the, you know, you play through the, uh, what do they call them? It's instances. It's like instances, it? yeah. The, you play through the instance and then you're done. Um, or you can play get another instance again if you want. However, we've got the games like H1Z1 which is a MMO, essentially, but the average playtime is about 40 minutes for the people who play so, it. Yeah. So you I, drop I don't in. know. I, I think there will always be people who want to play games habitually for hours and hours on end 
and of socialize course, yeah. with people. I think if Josie was here now, she would be very much against this. Yeah, because yeah. she she uses these games to socialize. Speaking of which, I nearly got Josie on today, but uh, because we have a full house, we just I decided against it. Otherwise, we'd all have been about this big on the uh, uh, on the stream screen. So, but we'll get a we'll get her back at some point. <clears throat> Um, yeah, no, I'm, I, I know there was always going to be people who, who thrive on the MMO type games. There's always going to be people who are old school like us, who, who prefer the, I say prefer, I, we still have a place in our heart for, you know, the Quake 2s of the world. Mm. Everyone's got their niche, I suppose. But I think this is this is a statement for the industry in general in terms of it's it's not profitable anymore for people, I think. I, think it's I reckon a... I reckon we phrase that WoW style MMOs are going dormant. I think they'll they'll sit around and like and it is a niche for five years or so and then they'll make a big comeback when people get excited about the idea of an MMO. Or because another big one comes playing, out. One of the big things about an MMO is the excitement of realising that you're playing a game with thousands of other people online at the same time. And then when you're in, when you're hooked, it's just crack basically. But it's just feeding you small amounts of extra reward to keep you playing. But I also got to a point with that where I realised I was just grinding for the next yeah, level. And I also got does. to a point where I was like, I can't be asked finding a group. It's too much like hard work finding a group so let's just let i'm just going to go and grind in an area where i can just about deal with the mobs at my level and then bandage up and then go and deal with another couple of mobs you know uh, I, and just grind and then i thought am i enjoying this am i actually enjoying grinding because all it is is grinding to get to a level you know yeah it's it's to get to get the next reward it, it, it hands out small amounts of reward that's how mmos work and i don't think that that gaming model was ever is ever going to be threatened, really. I think people will always be after that. That's why you still well, see people play Candy Crush. Advertos just mentioned MOBA-style games as well, because they're very different, aren't they? They are very much a match-style game, aren't they? You can drop in and out, I think, of the matches, can't you? No, I think you have to play fixed matches. So you start... I mean, you just mentioned lobbies as well, so M WoW is basically one big lobby, and you go to a certain place on the map where people on that server have decided to because it sometimes different servers have different hubs of activity sometimes it yeah. was it was it i can't remember the name of the main city in wow now the, the dwarf um, city the dwarf city is yeah ka ka, ka. summit forge no yeah iron forge sorry iron forge no, I'm, there thinking, we go. I'm thinking kaladin from um everquest yeah oh. iron forge there's iron forge and there was stormwind wasn't there there's two main cities mm. yeah i never went to stormwind i don't think i just went to Stor uh, iron Just forge. Stuff. I don't know. Anyway, but either way, it depends on the server, didn't it? Sometimes some servers you went on, or some uh, whatever they called them, blades or clusters or whatever. Shards. Shards. That's it. And uh, but yeah, that though the but, but MOBA style games, I imagine. And again, I haven't played them to any kind of extent, at least anyway. That I'm, I'm a professional on them or uh, they know everything about them. But I, I understand that you you go into a, a lobby. You set the game up, you get ready, and then you play like we yeah. like we would play maybe a Quake yeah. Two Rocket Arena match or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly what works. So it's different. It, that's very much a play a game for a certain amount of time, then you can quit out. You've got a, a certain point you can quit. Whereas MMO games, they either require discipline to stop at some point, which none of us have. <laughs> Or you just decide, right, I'm not going to play it anymore because I don't do you, have the time for that. Do, do you think this reflects this faddy, trendy, like, kind of low attention span way that gamers are get, like, moving towards? Not gamers, but people in general. Where the money towards. is, again, remember that where the money is are the people who, who don't play lots of games. They play specific games. They play Destiny. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, they play Destiny, <coughs> they play FIFA, they play COD, you know? They mm -hmm. want to play... A specific type of game and the people that i mean i suppose mmos are different again because we've got we've got people in mmos that are, are hardcore gamers some people just play wow you know is, is yeah. wow still popular i mean I don't, it's I, still really popular yeah it? yeah it's still the most popular mmo is it right i mean it's, it was great i loved playing it it was great discovering all the new places but you know now i've I had discovered most of the places by the time I was at like level 80 or something and I stopped getting the expansion packs so yeah anyway let's move on yeah I don't unless anyone else has got an opinion about MMOs never really played any yeah me neither did you not play WoW with us 
Yep. Thought you yep. were into WoW with us. We we played it as a clan for a little Steve, bit. Didn't Steve we? resisted my um, temptation of EverQuest because he, he I don't you just didn't get it, did you, Steve? You just didn't like. No, I, I completely got it. But no, I I'm just sure you got it. Like, you understood it, it, but yeah, exactly. You didn't get you didn't get into the. At, at the time when EverQuest was out, I was very heavily involved in doing quite a lot of science and engineering stuff for college and university. So that would have just made me feel, of course. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I, exactly, and it took over my life, and real life got in the way. But at the time, I was just working. I mean, I'm just starting to work, and I wasn't. I didn't have any outside of work commitments, you know, apart from seeing friends and that. So, anyway, right. So, something Sam and I are interested in, and you guys can sit back and sigh and huff about um, the the ongoing rigmarole with uh, Kojima Productions and Konami. and Konami. Now, I don't know how much you've been following it, Sam. Uh, yeah. Just to, to, I've been following it just on like these podcasts mainly. I have not not day to day jumping in and out, but not. I mean, one thing that's come out recently. So have you guys heard of this game PT that came out? It was uh, like a thirty minute sort of like demo game, and I'm not sure if it was free or if you had to pay a small amount for it. And it was uh, it was called PT, and it was basically then revealed that it was um, like a precursor to the new Silent Hill game that was being worked on by. Uh, Hideo Kojima and I believe Guillermo del Toro possibly do that mm -hmm. and there yep. was like a big thing that they were working on it together and the game was um you kept walking down this hallway it's in first person very very nice graphics as well really really well visually well put together and you kept walking through this hallway that was like you walk down the hallway you go around a corner and you walk through a door and you come back out and you're in the same hallway again and you keep going through that hallway and different things happen like there's a picture on one side that start to change you can go into a bathroom on one side and there's a weird dead baby thing in the toilet very creepy like silent hill kind of stuff and it was really really good all the all the sort of youtube people that like to scream at everything they all played it and it got quite big and yep. now that game's been cancelled apparently due to the whole thing with kojima leaving konami or they're not working well, they together haven't, they haven't confirmed that i don't think yet but there are a number of other things that have happened with konami now we've discussed this before Konami, I know this is a bold statement and it's probably not true because I'm not I'm I'm not an executive at Konami. I don't know these things, but K Konami basically is Kojima when you think about it. The, the popular it games that they do, I'm sure they make money on the you know on the band band games and you know rhythm games that they do and that stuff. But generally, it's rhythm games, Silent Hill, and Metal Gear Solid. Kojima, Kojima's not been has only just recently been a part of Silent Hill. He wasn't a part of any of the original. Uh, <coughs> they they kind of they outsourced that game a lot. The first three were by the same <coughs> creative team, and then they started outsourcing it, and the series went downhill fast after that. Constantly. Yeah. I mean, one thing you've got to remember about Konami is that the bit that we see in the West is only a very small part of it. So there's a lot of games that we don't actually get over here. That yeah, yeah, out. there is. There's a lot of games, but most of them are, are rhythm games and... Um, well, the, the, there's just, a lot of RPGs. There's, there's quite a lot of RPG series that we don't even know of over here. Mm. Okay, fair enough. Okay, so maybe my statement is too bold then, but I mean, in terms of the West at least anyway, we're very, mm. very interested in Silent Hill and Metal Gear. That's it. That's really all we care about from Konami. I don't think there's there's many other games that have come from them that have been that have appealed to us over here. Oh, really? Sweet kid. Was that economy game? Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. That's that's quite a, that's quite a long time ago though, wasn't it? Yeah. It's a long running series though. They're still yeah. developing games for it, I think, in Japan. You know what's and you know what's upset, very good. You know what's a little bit upsetting about the Metal Gear Solid uh, thing as well. Uh, Metal Gear Solid Five apparently he's rem the, the, because they've fallen out with uh, Hideo Kojima apparently they are removing the Kojima Productions logo from anything on Metal Gear Solid Five. They obviously they removed Kojima as a, a senior member of staff, and he's been a senior member of staff with a lot of you know a lot of kind of clout for many many years, and uh, they've they've also like delisted from the New York Stock Exchange and. Uh, I think they said that this is for financial reasons as well, but it just makes you think. I mean, I don't know. I don't. I. I it, they seem to be burning a lot of bridges, you know. 
and, and I don't know why. I, I... Are, you, are you sure he's been taken off? You can't really take consumer he's... productions off a Metal Gear Solid game when he's the director of the. the game. This is apparently what's been reported. They have t they're taking the logos off all of their Metal Gear Solid Five stuff. So when the, when it releases, it will be under the Konami brand rather than the Kojima Productions brand. Um, Koj uh, Hideo Kojima is uh, is going to be involved in Metal Gear Solid. He's leaving Konami in December. At the moment, they've taken him off as a senior staff member at Konami, uh, at Kojima Productions. Uh, sorry, one of the way, one of the rays around. Um, in December, everybody at Koj all the senior staff at Kojima Productions are being kind of sacked. They they're currently under a contract. They are now all contractors. They have not been. They've not been. They're not hired as staff anymore. So it's there. Really, is some bridges getting burned here. There's there's a. It's quite a, sounds quite nasty from the from an outsider's point of view. Obviously, we don't know all the details, but it just seems a bit funny. I mean, how much money have, has he made for them over the years? You know, uh, he's. I was wondering if there's ever been a precedent for anything like this before with a game company who's had a creative sort of director type person who's been so high up in the company that it's been this bubble size because. You don't hear about this. this from you do. People like you, well, you didn't hear about this until I just told you about it, did you? <laughs> the, the point. I no, mean, but the, it, the whole I, Ken Levine thing happened with, with um, they, they they've, they've sacked entire studios before now, and you know it happens all the time in the games industry. It's a cutthroat industry. If a, if a studio isn't making money for the publisher, they'll just get rid of it. I mean, I say I say just get rid of it. It's a, obviously there's a lot of. There's a lot of you know litigation and kind of other things that go on under under the covers, but it it happens all the time. That Bondi Studios that that was that just got shut down because people disagreed with other people. You know, it's, it's like it's, a director leaving a, um, a film or a series. Dan yeah. Harmon in Community, for example, you know that kind of thing. It's just people falling out with each other. And yeah, and this this sort of stuff does happen a lot in the games industry. You when you when you talk to people in the industry, they say that one of the big problems is that they treat like a resource. Yeah, and they're just dumped when they're not not gonna uh, when they're not providing like top class stuff or when, when they just seem to be someone can do it cheaper and make a sequel mm. like you, you make us a, an ip that's successful then we'll get some cheap company just to pump out sequels for it yeah we've 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 missed out on so many games as uh, as gamers because industry executives have made us a informed or uninformed decision that that game is not going to sell for yeah. whatever reasons, whether it be projections or personal opinions or <coughs> falling out with people in, in the studio. Remember that there are highly creative people in the games industry and those people, by by design, the creative people are quite, you know, they're, they're uh, argumentative, you know, and they will, they will always kind of stand up for their beliefs and their, you know, their what they want the game to be like. And I think that's probably what's happening here with, uh, with Kojima as well. But yeah, it's in, it's interesting that this is happening. I think, and it's it's quite a sad time in my eyes. It, uh, it'd have been nice if they if he, he kind of left on good terms. I think. I'm hoping they're not burning bridges, and maybe he can consult on future Metal Gears if if that happens. I wouldn't want. Sounds more like he was throwing his weight around a lot, and they were getting really sick of him basically being acting like God. It could be that. I'd be honest with you. I don't watch his interviews. I'm not. I, I don't know what I he's think like. The best thing we can take for this is to hope that. Because of this, there will be no more Metal Gear Solid games. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't see that coming a mile away. Yeah. Uh, Metal Gear Solid Five to me looks like the ultimate game for me. It looks it looks like it's going to be absolutely tremendous. Uh, it does look pretty cool. It's when like this, it's like a GTA Five. When's that you know? come out? Uh, September the first. No, right. it, so it's been delayed. It got delayed till September the first. That's the that's the current release date, I believe. September the first is a Tuesday. I won't be available Wednesday the second or Wednesday the ninth. That's all you're going to be really talking about. <laughs> Maybe I might not even get it immediately, depending on what's going on in my life. Yes, you, yes, you will. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll probably get it immediately. Yeah, I will. That's why I've got a bloody PS4. But <laughs> I, I was thinking of waiting for a couple of weeks and getting it on PC. But we'll see. We'll see. Right, so we've already talked about Silent Silent Hills being cancelled as well. Due it's to the, just a bit of a shame, just because that, from what I've seen of that little demo thing that was available, it looks pretty promising, like an interesting a new take on psychological horror. It was quite different to what I'd seen before. I was like, they can make a full game out of that, you know, fair play to them. They might bring Silent Hill back, and I was a fan of the original Silent Hill one, two, and three. So oh, it's so a that... shame. It's just a shame. <clears throat> I've only played uh, Frozen Memories or whatever it was. 
And, uh, shattered I, memories. Shattered memories. I always get that wrong. But That's I re- one of the better ones, apparently. I really, really enjoyed it, and I've not played the first two, and I sh- maybe should have done back in the day. But I'm not into horror games in general. But the Frozen Memories was, I think, because my wife was scared, I wasn't scared of it. It didn't haunt me. You know. Um, yeah. Sorry. Shattered, shattered memories. I'm not in the chat, so I can't paste that in, but that's quite relevant. I can't look at it because I'm recording, so someone else please paste that in the chat. So. Now I'll look at it. Yeah. Gamers are pissed about what what we're looking at. Everything. It's a little storyboard. But it's quite relevant. I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen it before. Fair enough. Well, that isn't that the one where they've got it, where electronic arts are on there, and it's just there's nobody saying anything. Yeah. My God, Johnson, then, do you hear that? What is it, the, sir? Silence. I think what, it's the first why? comment on the, the first comment on the Dark website was like, "Yeah, wait till Star Wars Battlefront comes out; they'll soon be getting some like yeah, picketing yeah. outside their offices as soon as they do their day one DLC always online wank with that game, which they will do." I've straight already heard, away, if but, everyone will get annoyed. I've already heard it. people getting is, really annoyed about it. Is that just that? that, that hang on, EA do, did Battlefield uh, Hardline, didn't they? They're, they're Battlefield. Yeah. Yeah, they're dice yeah, they're doing Star Wars Battlefront as so well. Mate. That must yeah. be very, very current. That mem because because they're constantly getting stick for meme. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> honestly, Lou, Lou, yeah, there's the only person on the planet. But that, that 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 must be very, very current. That meme. Meme. Is it? Yes. Anyone confirm? Oh, wait, I don't know. I've never seen it. I saw it pop up on uh, the Dark website yeah, a couple of days ago. So right, yeah, right. it's pretty pretty new. Right, so um, next uh, next article. Uh, Steam gets its first adults-only game called Hatred. Now, we talked about this Hatred. We saw some um, footage a while back. Mm. It is pretty nasty. I thought this game Maybe was already out. school challenge or something? Um, I, 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 I can't remember off the top of my head. I just remember that it is basically very nasty in general. The, the, it's just the about killing it. everything, isn't it? It's just about being the most horrible, <laughs> violent person you can, basically. Yeah, right? in the nastiest Absolutely. way you can, yeah. Um, but it's now it's now out, and it's they're referring to it as the first Steam adults-only game. Um, I'm not sure exactly what that means. Yeah, yeah it's, it, it, it isn't out. It's out in one month, four days, I mean, December hours. 31st. Oh, adult-only rated games have never been made available on for sale on steam before so must be getting enough hype to for valve so what, to go all right what's classed as an adult only rated game wouldn't you wouldn't be in america so what's the what's the rating got to be i mean is that the equivalent of an 18 over here because isn't like half-life 2 fit into that category or there's grand theft auto any grand theft auto game i think they're slightly different in the kind of recommendations and in most respects like an r-rated thing i think you can it's a fifteen it's, equivalent, isn't it? Yeah, kind of, but it's like it's made made to be more of a big thing over there. But then you've got like adults, and uh, I don't I don't know exactly, but okay. I don't know. I don't know the rating system. I know that we're Any, the, anybody is eighteen aware plus. Of that. Basically, it's it's in yeah. the ESRB eighteen plus. Well, there's loads of eighteen plus games on Steam. That's, so that's like a that's kind of like an American thing, then, isn't it? Surely. I think it's like Lou said, I think the majority of them come with a recommendation. Yeah. This is full stop, 18 only. Yeah, okay. and probably yeah. after have some kind of verification within Steam in order for you to buy it. <laughs> Just ask you, is, ask you your point of your, your date of birth like it normally does. <laughs> so, if, you, that, if, you're a, if you're a 12 year old kid and you've got a Steam account, you can get a game on Steam that you couldn't walk into a game and buy that's an 18 because there's plenty of 18 games that if you go into a game shop they won't sell to you that's a good point a yeah they're, they're, I don't know how they'll enforce that because at the end of the day you've got to be 18 to have a, a functioning credit card to I, buy stuff off Steam if I remember rightly I tried to change my date of birth on Steam a while back somewhere anyway I tried to oh no you know what it was Facebook ignore me and it didn't let me it wouldn't let me change it for some reason um, yeah, there, yeah there can't be that many kids on the Steam community because if you've got your own account you have to have a <laughs> A card to pay it with, right? You're, you're joking or, me, right? Well, I don't, I don't use it, mate. So you tell me. Well, either that or it's just full of juveniles, people who can't form sentences and. But their parents pay for it for them, then. Yeah. 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 I don't know. I, I, should, I never really thought about you it. You get Steam cards, can you? Yeah, I, I, do, I I'm not sure what this actually means for anything, to be honest. I guess the, the only the only thing that matters to me about a game like Hatred 
is is it a good game? I don't yeah. care about how horrible yeah. and violent it is if it's good. They had the same shit kicked off about Manhunt a few years ago, and I was like, right, all this stuff about Manhunt, yes, but I actually thought that it was a very good stealth sort of horror action game. I really thought it was a good game, and all the shit that came out about it kind of detracted from that. It was all just like, oh, it's violent, and you can stab people in the eyes. Yes, you can, but it's all it's a very engrossing and good game experience. It's a well-made game. Is Hatred going to be a good game? It might be, but is it just going to be about how harsh and unpleasant it is, rather than if it's actually got any looks good... A lot, looks, it looks like a very dark version of Postal, the original Postal. I was thinking that when I seen it. Which is basically some horrible guy in a trench coat killing people for no reason. Yeah. Mm. I, I'll still judge it, I think, if there, I, if there I play it. But... There will needlessly be like some you know bleeding heart all games turn everyone into psychopaths. Oh yeah, of course well, yeah. Speaking speaking of bleeding heart liberals, um, there, there was a, a, I just saw a, a video today actually, uh, again on the GameSpot site. I'm sorry all these links are from GameSpot today, but GameSpot actually was quite full of relevant articles today. Um, feminists playing GTA 5, and obviously they haven't played it before. And uh, it's, just, it's just three or four five six whatever um girls playing playing gta 5 and you know what while they were playing it they were going around and they were beating up prostitutes because it was a game and they were they were going in the strip club and throwing money at people and t at, at the girls and touching them up and they were they were you know trying to run people over that they, they sh probably shouldn't be running over and they were enjoying it but at the end of it nearly every single one of them was going this is an immoral game it's not very good this but they I were know it's immoral yeah, well, that's the point. It's satire, isn't it? It's meant to be a it's meant to be a, a stab at American culture in general. But the the fact is, is that they were enjoying it as a game. They they realised they disconnected themselves from the reality that this isn't actually what's happening right now. I'm enjoying have, it. Have we, as a race, forgotten forgotten what tongue in cheek means? Mm. And about having fun without taking things seriously. You've only got yeah. to listen to one GTA radio advert to understand the tone that those games are going for. I, I, it's so, it's just so silly. I mean, even the even the really horrible stuff in GTA Five, like the torture bit, which I thought was a bit like Jesus, come on, is still done in a in a quite a tongue in cheek, silly way. Even though it's really horrible. I, don't know, I didn't it's... think I didn't think about how horrible that bit was when I was doing it, but it wasn't until afterwards when people were saying how horrible it was. I thought about it. And I thought, yeah, I haven't actually tortured anyone in a game on purpose because the game told me to. Although <laughs> thinking about it, yeah, I've played games <laughs> where I've shot people's legs off and then watched them crawl around on the floor and then shot another leg and stuff like that. I've tortured Soldier people fortune. out of my own. <laughs> yeah. I, I've... I've for the lulls. Yeah, for, for the lulls. And just like not even thought anything of it. I haven't then gone outside and tried it for real. <clears throat> I think Did we've established the, I, that though. That we, we, you don't connect video game violence with real violence if you're sane. Have they, um, have they, did they bring, I've not watched the little video just because I didn't get onto the document until we were about to go live, but in the video, did any of them mention anything about not having a female playable character in the one player game? Because I think that would genuinely be an interesting step for GEA to take, is to like have a, have a female character who can maybe go to a male gigolo and beat him up and get his, get the money back off him. You're like, do all the same stuff you well, can in GTA, but I'd just be a woman and not a the man. The point is, is, is in GTA. That'd be funny. Yeah. You can go up to a male gigolo as a male person, uh, as someone male, and be there aren't male gigolos in it. Though. There aren't there aren't male prostitutes in GTA. You no, can't there be are, gay. In it, can oh, sorry, you? not gigolos. I'm thinking of pimps. Sorry, you can you can beat up the oh, pimps. pimps and... Yeah, <laughs> it is a, it is a very male oriented that. game, isn't it? It is, but again, we we come back to the where the but, money is going to get made. But loads of girls like it as well. Like my sister's always like Grand Theft Auto because yeah. I've played him, and she likes just driving cars around and doing all that stuff. Yeah, my girlfriend was playing does. it. My, my girlfriend was playing it a few days ago, and she was pissing herself laughing, just driving over people like on the <laughs> sidewalk and stuff. She she's like absolutely killing everything and shooting cops in the head and stuff. And she was really enjoying it. Yeah, as you do. Because it's a fun game. It, at the bottom end of the day, it's like you just said previously. Is it a good game? Yes, it's a great game. Does it matter that you can shoot police in the face? They're not real police. One, one of the one of the <laughs> girls on that video said something to the effect of, and I'm paraphrasing slightly, um, something to the effect of, if you played this game at a young age, now let me finish before you jump in. If I played this game at a young age, at a form in my formative years, this is going to this is going to affect me for the rest of my life. 
now I'll let you I'll let you answer that because I've, I, I'm sick of repeating these points. I've played some pretty gruesome <clears> games <throat> in my formative years and I, it hasn't turned me into some kind of but you, mean, you were stabbing me last weekend maybe that was loving stabbing person me. is the type of person who was easily influenced by anything that they see or do so maybe they should have been locked in like you know, a room with no well, type of that's yeah, maybe the, the, if, missing, if, your, missing... if your argument of morality is that if you played a game that was immoral, then that would turn you into a murderer, then I don't really want to be around you because I think you're, you're quite ready to kill someone already. You're yeah, all you're missing the sense. point here. You're all missing the point that if you're young and playing this game, you shouldn't be playing this game because it is yeah, an 18. Yeah. Hands up who plays an 18 before they were 18. Yeah, obviously. Hands up yeah, there's, 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 there's a limit, 18. though. Like, there's, there's a limit. Like, if there was, I'd say, if you were, say, like... For a game like Grand Theft Auto V, I'd say like, if you're about maybe 12 is the sort of age where I might have been allowed to play that. And it, But if you were like 6, I think it's too young to understand what the hell's going on. So it's probably know, not appropriate. There's, parents, there's an age where you shouldn't be exposed to everything. But I think it's not as young as people say. And it's, it's to do with I, what I the think responsible if you were six, adults... it wouldn't interest you. I think that, if you were 6, I, I was you'd at, play Minecraft. I, that's not I, true. I, 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 have... I was at a friend's uh, party a while ago... Um, and there was like a family, big family affair, um, and there was kids there. One of them was like five years old, and somebody there was some, was teenagers there who found, you know, a mate's copy of Grand Theft Auto Five were playing it. And the little they were doing the whole stuff like you do. The little six year old kid was watching it, and it was like he was sort of getting into it and seeing people get run over and stuff. And it was like, yeah, you're probably a little bit, a little bit too young for this. I, I'd say I, six is too young for Grand Theft Auto. In primary school, I was reenacting that sort of stuff anyway me, me and a friend were obsessed with violence and guts and doing army yeah but we, we go really over the top with it and i would have relished a game like grand theft auto when i was when i was <laughs> seven that's eight. a good point actually sir when we were kids we didn't have, have uh, you know the likes of grand theft auto weren't available because the technology wasn't there uh but we used to play with plastic guns and imagine we were killing each other and stabbing each other and slashing That's each other. That's a boy thing, though, in general, Crushing each other. I'd play, I'd play karate fights with me mates and I'd actually manage to damage people by accident as well, even though we kind of agreed that we weren't going to hit each other. That's because all the other kids were like three foot tall and you were <laughs> seven foot tall with a beard. With a beard. <laughs> that's, that's the thing. It's... It, <laughs> well, well, look, we're kind of rehashing things that have been said over and over again, and we're not going to change the world because we're four white, co you know, Caucasian blokes. That oh, I suppose Lou isn't. Yourself. Yeah, forgetting about forgetting about you. I, I clash you was I clash you was one of us. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds very discriminatory. Yes, it is. Yeah. Um, but no, I'd, honorary I'd, white person. The point is, is that we're not we're not going to change anything. What we've been what we've said has been said much more articulately by like, <laughs> by, the, by other people better than us. And the the, the I think I, I don't know. I, I, let's just stop. Let's just stop talking about it because we're not going to get anywhere. Yeah. All spoke at once. Yeah, the PC gamers among us. Um, some boffins of Logitech have developed uh, a new type of mouse hardware, which has supposedly got unlimited reaction speeds. What does that mean? It means, uh, in, in essence, what they've done is they've taken the optical sensors that you can already get, combined them with the likes of the, uh, the gyroscopes and accelerometers that you get in mobile phone technology, and it can actually sense the speed increases and movement, like dynamic changes that you're making. And transfer that with the software that you're using. Eh? Is not what a oh, mouse is that does. Any different from a mouse. Yeah, that's what a mouse does. It tracks when it's been moved. No, um, a, a, a mouse doesn't track when it's been moved. It scans what's happening underneath it. Yeah, it does, and it, it basically takes a photo, or a low resolution photo, and decides which yeah. which way it's moving and how fast it's moving. Yeah. If you combine that with accelerometers, that can measure g as well. What it's saying is that if, if if you move rapidly to the right, it can accentuate that more naturally. So, like, so it's like acceleration. Yeah, acceleration and mouse but, smoothing. But, but not software acceleration, hardware acceleration. Oh, I'll I'll give it a go. If the, if I the mouse is cheap. That. You haven't tried. I it. like that my my mouse is a, it, it uh, acts as a one to one linear. Representation of where I'm moving my mouse on the map. If I don't want it, I don't want anything to interfere with that. 
It annoys me enough that Windows well. interferes with that. There's other benefits as well. It, 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 mm. it, like for example, it'll work on more than two axes. Not necessarily to a high degree, but so if you wanted to, let's say... <laughs> so when you rage quit, throw your mouse across the room, then, then that <laughs> gives some kind of... Why is it not oh, working? Let's say if, My mouse isn't doing let's anything say, for example, on the screen. If you're playing a game and you want to reload, <laughs> you could have reloaders so you just kind of like, yeah, you know, you just bump the mouse slightly. Or it also would work on any surface, it doesn't need to be an optical surface. Uh, yeah, okay. Maybe. If that's done right, if, then maybe. If, if we stick with your yeah, attitude, we'd we'll still be using balls in our mice. We're still going to lose attitude. We'd, we'd still be like, oh, using shiny. rocks to hit each other with. X and y and, uh, no, I, I want I want a mouse to basically do what I do on the pad with my hand. That's what yeah. a mouse is there for. Yeah. And ball mice have problems here to collect gunk, so optical mice are fine. Although optical, optical mice, mice used to have stupid traffic tra uh, tracking problems in the early days. Yeah. Where they jump to the corner <laughs> of the screen, if you remember. So. Uh, I'm not a Luddite, I, I do want mice to evolve. But... Can you guys not speak at the same time? Because we can't hear either of you when you both talk. Optical mice really have their problems as well. Are you used to? <laughs> yes, the, uh, old mice have problems, that's the thing. And, and, and a new mouse is going to have its own problems, I imagine, until it works it out. Yeah, like anything. but as they develop the technology further, these, these problems will get less and less and less until you get to... A perfect scenario. I agree, and I'm I'm perfectly happy with uh, with advancements in anything. I mean, you know, mice could be better. They're good enough for me. I'm happy with them as they are. I understand how they work. But imagine the scenario, I... Lou, when you've got your um, uh, your rift on. Rift. Yeah, and your mouse can then turn into something that you can move around in 3D space I would and manipulate I'd rather with. have a specific controller for that though. I wouldn't want my mouse to do that. I'd want some nunchuck style controllers like what um, uh, Valve are developing. I think I'm probably on, on Lou's page there. I think I, I don't mind jumping between my control pad and my mouse and my keyboard and joystick and, you know, nunchucks if we have them. I, I don't mind that because, mind you, I, saying that, that, that unepic game that I've been playing it's got brilliant kind of bindings on the pad. You can kind of dy dynamically bind things to different key combinations, but you have to use the keyboard for a few commands. You have to use the F keys for certain things. So it's a little bit like I'm playing a game and then press F2 to go through my weapons or whatever, although you can shortcut them as well. So yeah, I jump between them in a game is not maybe a problem, but I think if you've got, if it all works, I don't know, I'm, I'm up for, I'm up for a, changing how mice work i'll be honest when when laser mice came out it was amazing it was amazing didn't have to run that bloody dos program every time i ran it so i could get a higher fresh refresh rate if you read the bump on the website it basically says that it will track your movement to five times the resolution of the best optical mouse on the market at the minute right i mean yeah i'd like to try it really it's one of the hard things where oh dear there's chris, chris gone, gone. Right, I'm on the I'm on the stream. My camera reset itself for some reason. Um, Another uh, funny yeah, hardware thing I read today was apparently uh, the Apple Watch doesn't work if you've got a tattoo on your arm. I, I heard something <laughs> about that on the news. Yeah, it doesn't. It can't. It, it's not that it doesn't work. It just basically can't do the heartbeat scanning if you've got certain dark pigments where the watch That's is. That's amazing. It, it uses infrared, doesn't it, to, to look at your skin? Yeah, but then all the all the all the hipsters that have got it are gonna have hipster tattoos, so it won't work. Hey, so <laughs> does it? Uh, sorry, what I, about so, if you're really dark skinned? Like, I was just gonna say, what, what if you're? That's a good point. Yeah. What if you're black? What, uh, what, well, does that work? It's it's their technology because like the Microsoft version does work with tattoos. Good. But this works on a galvanic skill, uh, skin response hey. as well as. <laughs> you're all, awesome you're you were working it around to that, weren't you? That's what it was yeah, all look about. At this. Look at my fucking watch, it's <laughs> awesome. I just really hate Apple, so any opportunity I get to piss on them, I take it. It's just not pissing on them, you're just, you're just following trends that are pointless and useless. Don't don't buy watches. <laughs> no, bringing what? up the, the problem that you the oh, forgotten. Thing he said. I've already forgotten what we're talking about. <laughs> It, it's racist. Apple Apple watches are racist. If you buy, right, which is okay. funny because wasn't it wasn't it Will I Am that was the big promoter of them as well? <laughs> what the hell? Look at this. Oh, it's not <laughs> working. It doesn't work. <laughs> Why is it not working? <laughs> Jeff, what what's his name? He's dead now, isn't he? Jeff. <laughs> Jeff. 
Fucking Apple, no, dude. They, what? Steve uh, Jobs. Jobs, Steve that's Jobs. it. Steve Jobs. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff Jobs. <laughs> Jeff Jobs. That's a porn name, Jeff that, isn't Jobs. it? <laughs> or it sounds like it's a bit of a like cartoon, cartoon builder. <laughs> Oh, right. Um, okay, so there's one other controversial Steam thing that's happened recently, and this is, um, I was looking through the articles um, uh, on various websites, and I was finding quite a lot of con controversy around um, Valve releasing payable mods on Steam. So, you know, the Steam Workshop, it's all been free up until recently, and... Um, re recently they've decided, right, we're going to... We're gonna, um, Bethesda have decided they're going to retract all of their payable uh, Steam Workshop mods for Skyrim, and I think probably everyone else is going to follow. And, and there's also a lot of um, a lot of talk from Valve saying that we might they might retract it entirely. I I didn't even know it existed until today. I have to be honest with you. I I read a statement today while I was on my lunch that Valve already have retracted it. Have they? Have, Valve have, have fully retracted it, yeah. right? They made the statement there was that much of an uproar that it was going to completely ruin um, the community, hmm. and that pay, they've just basically backed it out straight away, well, which is the right thing. The, com the community we're talking about here is just uh, a lot of people who put naked women into Skyrim. No, because uh, on on Skyrim, what's uh, what's that big mod call where they added uh, loads of new shouts, new quests, new characters? Nah, I know uh, you mean. I can't remember the name of it though. And he's done it for free, and the comparison they're making is one of the. Uh, the uh, Bethesda soft ones was basically a mini fishing game and they wouldn't charge a fiver for it. So you had all this content for free that a guy had basically plumbed months and months and months into and a crap little fishing game that Bethesda soft to make that were that we're gonna charge for. Potato said in chat that modders only got twenty five percent of the what? revenue from their mods. What which is Valve crazy. Got the rest oh. or is it the publishers? Valve and uh, and Bethesda I imagine shared the rest of that. Seventy-five oh, percent. What is the point these days? I mean, back back in the day, yet again, we, people used to create mods and maps and all kinds of stuff for free because they were having fun doing it. Some of them would charge for it occasionally. It, sometimes it would. They'd get a publishing deal and they'd you know they'd put it. They'd, they'd make a CD out of it and be able to sell that commercially. But the, it's just That's DLC, right. isn't it? DLC gone mad. They were trying. They're trying to create a new DLC model. Because they're not happy with how it works at the moment because people whinge about it. So what they want to do is get the, the people that play the game to create the DLC for it, then charge for the stuff that people have done that they didn't... For the man hours that they haven't had to pay for, like... Yeah. That doesn't make any... They're getting paid for man hours that they've not put in. The that thing the is... That the modder has put in. I think what leaves a sour taste in the mouth is that for so long the mods have been free, whereas... The, this, the way that the new Unreal Tournament is working is, is similar to this in that they're going to allow developers of mods to sell those mods if they want. They can release them for free or they can sell them. If they sell them then obviously um, Epic Games will take a cut of that. But they're doing that from the start and they're being open about that whereas it looks like what's happened here is they've tried to shoehorn it in and there's already so much great like free content for Skyrim out there that it's like, what the hell? We were getting this for free and now we've got to pay for it and the guys who are making it and put like busting the balls to make this stuff want to make a bit of money from it when you're getting 25 percent what and eh? apparently um volvo get 30 percent according to no, that's valve. i know i know <laughs> <laughs> valve get 30 percent 45 percent to bethesda the the publisher or the the owner of the ip and then 25 to the modder but I still think that 25 is a bit low, even though they, they wouldn't be able to make it without the tools that, that Bethesda provide. They wouldn't be able to make it without the game existing that Bethesda provide. But Bethesda have arguably already made their money out of the game, you know? But more importantly, Bethesda didn't make that mod. No, but no, but they, 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 they wouldn't exist without them. So they'd have to take some cut, but not as much as they are. Yeah, so if, if, if they took 5%, that's still 5% more than they would have got. Yeah, because yeah, they're not yeah, doing any point. work for this. No, no, you you're right there. But for, it's, 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 they've not put any extra man hours or anything into doing no. that. They've released a product and been paid for that by the revenue that that made. Once the modders have then created their own content with the tools provided, this they're is the one that's put all the time into it. This is exactly the, the same thing that's going on with YouTube though, and and Twitch and everywhere else. You know, you've you've got you've got advertising money being taken and you've got a very very small percentage going to the the content makers 
Um, I, I distinctly, I distinctly remember um, discs that got released, commercial discs that got released for Doom and Duke Nukem, which were full of loads of maps that were downloaded on the internet for free, and then sold. Mm. <laughs> it's the same thing, and these authors didn't even get told about. It. They just they they put their maps on public FTPs and stuff like that at the that time. That would have been the EULA though and the license agreement probably if you make any Well they didn't have a license agreement that's the thing. Uh, and some, I remember some of them would, would have a document with them which said you know don't use this commercially and stuff and they still did it hmm. because they knew they wouldn't get any backlash. What are they going to do? Yeah what a, a little one man band versus multi-million dollar yeah. publisher yeah. But the thing I is, you buy is, like a CD with like a thousand maps for, for this a game is the on world it. we live in. You're not even as a, a developer these days. You, you're going to make less money than publishers. You're going to make less money than people who are, you know, selling your product and making your product, making the public aware of your product. It's 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 a really difficult one to call. I think for me. I mean, I, yes, I do agree that they're taking too much, but it's difficult in terms of it's a bit of a catch-22. It's a bit of a... You, 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 the, the mod wouldn't exist without the modders, and it would, the mod also wouldn't exist without the the publishers and the... Or it wouldn't be as popular without the publishers, and it wouldn't exist without the developers in the first place. They'd go somewhere else to another game with a different model, which could be worse or could be better. We look at EA games, you don't, you can't mod EA... Well, no, I take that back. I know someone who does a lot of mods for... Um, Dragon Age games re and, and Mass Effect games, so there's obviously some kind of mod, modding software for that. Hey, right, so um, let us move on. Batman Arkham Knight. Yeah. I am getting more excited about this as time goes on. I, I do like the the Arkham the uh, Batman games, but um, Arkham Knight in particular, not because of the size of the game or anything like that. It just just sounds like it's going to be awesome. Uh, uh, has anybody um, else been following it? Um, I've no. not been. I'm seeing little bits here and there. Uh, so I'd, I'd seen a trailer that came out, I think, about a month ago. Uh, quite an extensive gameplay trailer where it showed some gameplay on foot and in the Batmobile uh, in the city, sort of doing one mission, I think, trying to chase down somebody for information. And that was really cool. It was very fluid and smooth. Transition between the Batmobile and the. Uh, the on foot stuff look cool. The Batmobile, it's hard to tell how it controls, but it looks it looks fun. Mm. Like it looks very it looks very powerful and fast and the way you want a like a Batmobile to be really. So yeah, I mean this is something that I talked about ages ago where I was like, Oh, imagine an open world like GTA meets Batman game where you get to drive the Batmobile around the city solving crimes. Everyone's awesome wanted this for be? ages though. Everyone's wanted that since the beginning of, of Arkham Arkham Knight, for God's sake. Yeah. So when you, when you drive over people as Batman, do you just do this get up again with broken arms or something? <laughs> I would guess that they'll probably have some sort of thing where his car's got like a built in bat sensor where it won't let you run over pedestrians or something. Like, there'll be some bollocks, won't there, about it? Well, they've, there's, they've, apparently they, they announced that there's going to be six months worth of DLC available on a season pass as well. Uh, again, if you're into that kind of thing, that's cool, but I'd probably just play the game and be happy with that because I think there's going to be plenty of content in the game. Uh, the uh, the system requirements for it are a bit hungry, yeah. Well, this is uh, this is another one thing I've just pasted into the chat. Six gig memory requirement. I mean, I, I've minimum. Got, yeah, minimum. I'm I'm all right with that. I've, but this is this is memory. It's it should be getting to this point. The more stuff that you have going on in a game, the more stuff that that goes on in uh, a more texture memory you need, the more high higher quality rendering you have, you're going to need more memory. And the the fast, you know the the more impressive games look, the more memory you're going to need. Not just graphics memory, I'm talking about system memory as well for various other things. Hey, look at the recommended specs order. i7-3770. 8 gigs of memory. A, GDO, uh, a, a, a GTX 760. It is being released on consoles as well, though, if you've got that's one. That's a hungry game, that. Yeah, yeah. There's, I'm, it's about I think, time. I think Witcher I'm, I'm, 3 is, uh, is pretty high up, though, as well. I've got to be, Do you think it's about it. time that the, the game started demanding some powerful machines again? We've gotten used to the fact that we can basically have five-year-old hardware now and still play the most recent games. I think that it should be at a point whereby the games can run Uber on very high-end machines but also still function. Yeah, that's, See, now, that's who's, now, now who's holding things back by wanting to live in the past? 
But they're still. I'm not holding things back, but I want to live in the past. If you want to talk about, you know, if if you want to play that on a recommended spec, you're talking about spending over a grand. Recommended spec. That will be a full. That will be a full full whack recommended spec probably. Yeah, that's what they recommend you to play. It, not. The, but I don't know. spend. I don't spend anything less than a grand whenever I do a computer upgrade. Yeah, but that's. I'm an enthusiast. I'm a gamer. That's what gamers this, do. This is what PC that's gamers what we do. We all do. I don't. I don't know what your problem is. If you, if you, if your graphics card is not going to be capable of running it, you're My going to get a new. Well, I was say if it wasn't though, you're going to you're going to get more. If you don't have enough memory in your computer, you're going to upgrade and get more. That that's how it works. I mean, it always has. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I, I don't mean, see the problem. I know that we haven't had to do that for a long time because we basically accepted the fact that games are running on lots of different spec PCs now, <coughs> mainly because of being done on console as well. If you look at, for example, another recent release, uh, Grand Theft Auto V, which looks beautiful, is an immense landscape, runs fluid. Look at the recommended specs for that. Tell me. Go on. Um, I've got one in front of me. It's an i5. Right. An i5 with a GTX 660 two generations ago. The, the, the I, an i5 isn't... Well, that's because the bloody it was released on the PS3, for God's sake. Yeah, but it's been remade by... Practice yeah, the just higher, the higher textures. You just need a bit more graphics memory for it. That's all it is. They haven't changed how the, the mesh rendering works or the, the, um, the, the main graphics engine. They haven't changed any of that. They've just made things more high, high fidelity. Probably better uh, quality sound and things like that in it. It's... it's the, I imagine... This new um, uh, new Batman game will probably be PBR, and PBR is is kind of a real time graphics rendering pipeline, which means that everything runs in real time. That means that it's going to take more system specs. That is the that is the way that games development is moving. I don't know this for a fact because I don't I haven't looked at how Batman's um, uh, Arkham Knight's been been set up, but. The, the more technology comes out, the more advanced stuff we're going to get higher specs on computers. I haven't yeah. got a problem with this at all. I, I don't no, no. But the point I'm trying to make is that Grand Theft Auto looks better than Batman, but yet it takes a less Does hard it? work. Does it? Yeah. Does it really look better than Batman? Yeah. You look at Batman, and, and all you can see is a lot of shiny black textures. G not G much draw distance because it's all quite closed in. So you're not actually getting a very far view distance. There's not a no, lot happening on but the screen apart from the close up stuff. The, the, the one of the things that they've had to do with that game is they've raised the height of all of the buildings. So when you're traveling in the Batmobile, you can you, it feels better and it kind of works yeah. a bit and, and they can spread out the buildings a bit more. Sorry, they can keep them closer, not spread them out a bit more. But when you are Batman and you're firing your grappling hook and getting on the top of the ceiling, uh, getting on top of a... a a building, you'll still be able to look down and see the entire cityscape. You'll be able to see a lot of black with a few shiny like reflections. I kind of know, uh, know what these coming from here because basically they want to put the optimization into it that that they have with GTA 5 because GTA 5 was targeted for very weak pe uh, weak machines. It was targeted for Xbox 360, and uh, they've, they've added stuff to it. They've scaled it up for newer machines, but they can still scale that down and the minimum spec could play it as it looked on the, the original Xbox 360, I imagine. You play Grand Theft Auto V on the Xbox One and play it on the PC, you see a world of difference. Oh, I imagine I haven't difference. seen it yet, so I don't know. We can look at the uh, there's <clears throat> videos of them side by side. Xbox One, PS4, PC. There's a world of difference. GTA V has been done with a lot of care, a, a lot of attention to detail, a lot of optimization. It looks that Arkham Knight hasn't. They've just no, said, what's do. the best thing we can get out of, you know, out of it? Right, what's that going to take? It's going to take a very high-end PC. Right, well, that's what we'll sell it for. So that's their I think, problem, they, I think they're just being realistic, though. I think they're just being realistic, though. They, they, they know that... You're telling me that they couldn't have optimised that. I'm not they could, they, they couldn't. could do, but they, no, they could. They could optimize the share of it, but they hadn't needed to because they haven't made it for the Xbox 360. They've made it for the current spec hardware. I know what I'm, you mean, but I don't. I don't think it's right that we should be optimizing the, the share of things to get them running on. We'd be waiting. We'd be waiting another twelve months for them to optimize it if we were doing that. Yeah. That's the thing. There's there's one overriding factor here, and semiconductor speed is basically at its peak right 
you can't mm -hmm. just keep throwing more speed into stuff because we're we're pretty much at our top now. Unless we start going to superconductors, which is is an option, graphene, you know, carbon nanotubes, it's all an option, but it's years in the future. We live in a world where we're kind of like a throwaway society. We waste a lot of energy. That's just wasting energy. It's not optimized, and it should be. I, I, I'd, I'd have to, I'd have to see the game. I think I, I disagree with you. I don't think it's going to look as. Uh, I don't think GTA Five is going to look. Sorry, I, I think this GTA game 5. will look better than GTA Five. Yeah, GTA Five does a lot of tricks to make itself look good. I think Batman, Batman will do it uh, all with raw power. Yeah, it'll basically just run things through a physically based shading model, like Chris says, and there won't be any cheating involved. I mean, well, you can still cheat with physically based shading. We'll have this conversation again. Yes, and I, I'm going to be. I think I'll be on the bandwagon of jumping on that when it comes out as well. <coughs> I, don't know, I don't know about waiting for PC again. I don't know if it's coming out at the same time. But yeah, again, it depends on the like like Lou was saying about the controls with the GTA. Is it going to be geared towards it's a controller setup where it actually might be beneficial to play that game on a controller, especially for the driving stuff. That might be the deciding factor for you, but then if you don't mind switching, yeah, because they're, they're clearly marketing the Batmobile as being a big, big part of this game. Aye, right, so let's move on before Steve gets in too much more of a grump about it. <laughs> okay. um, Facebook is hinting that the Oculus Rift is not going to come out this year. Are we surprised? We're not surprised because we've seen lots of people, basically competitors, doing much better jobs of this. Uh, Oculus are in a bit of a problem position now in that they were the first to market with this stuff, say to market, they were the first to get this stuff out and first isn't necessarily best, second is normally best. So what? it's, oh. I think I think it's Valve are going to clean up in the VR world, if indeed it does take off, well, because yeah. it's kind of be, it's, it's kind of looking now like people have got bored of it already. Well, they announced it too early, I think, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, it's... I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna make a full call on it. I still think it's a very, very early technology, and it'll either fail miserably like it did before, or it will be a slow burner, and we'll get to a point where it will be commercially viable, and it'll be commercially acceptable to get a, you know a, a VR headset for whatever platform you work on. But I still think wearing. Look at what happened with 3D. I know 3D isn't brilliant. It doesn't look good, but you still have to put the glasses on. That's my main problem with 3D. The fact that mm. I have to charge the bloody... Well, I mean, I've got an active set, but I have to charge the graphic, the, the glasses. Unless you've got 3DS. Yes. Well, well, that's the thing. That's one of my things with 3D, is if, if we had screens that were, um, again, commercially viable, because there are screens that do do this, but they're quite small, I think, or they were last time I was looking it up. They have to be because of the way they work. Yeah, so, I mean, if we had a big screen that we could have on 3D without having to wear glasses, and we could just sit there and watch it, I'm in. The only Until way you could do that on a large scale is if the, the screen itself was concave to the same type of magnitude as your iris. And that would change for everybody. Follow you around, so you got the same focal distance all the way around it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's going to be too hard to do that on a big screen. It's Especially probably a bit easier to, to track your eyes. Your head, beam you have to your have eyes. head in one position. Yeah. To watch it, you won't be able to move. And uh, people's uh, eyes are different shapes, hence people. I mean, uh, yeah. Is it astigmatism when it's uh, elongated? Uh, yes, I think so. Uh, no, isn't it stigmatism when it's when when eyes are slightly they're not they're not converging properly? Like bog -eyed. Oh, I'm not sure. Basically, yeah. <laughs> Good old bog-eyed. Well, so I, I said, are we are we surprised though that Oculus Rift are doing this? And is there any? I don't know. Do you, what yes do you think? No. Do you think they're going to get? Do you think they're going to get left behind? Even though they've ploughed so much yeah, money into they it. Yeah, yeah, they are. They're, they're basically, they've done all the groundwork so that other people can can come along and just. Just get it working. But they're also doing a lot of other things on the side as well, um, or are. They're not Oculus, I mean, in general, and Facebook. They're, they're not just do, focusing on the VR experience, either. They've got lots of other avenues. And... They have, but they, 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 they've acted for a long, a long time now like they're the only people who can get it right. And what has been demonstrated quite clearly now in the last few months is that lots of people can get this right and get this more right than them. Yeah, I'm better, yeah. <laughs> So I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait until the, the, the I'm going to make a decision then. I mean, it's cool to have a little 
toy and play with it and but I certainly wasn't going to start looking at, at putting games together for it you know yeah. be interesting to see how it pans out anyway it's it seems to as you said it seems to be dying down a little bit it seems to be people are losing a bit of interest but that's just generally how it goes if you announce things too early I think but then again if you don't announce things too early, you have to time it just right for the public because yeah. we're a fickle bunch as, as human beings um Right, so let's uh, close the show on uh, a little bit of a, a happy note. All of the Super Mario sound effects played at once. I don't know if you've... I've not listened to it yet. I guess it's it. just a, a big splodge of noise, isn't it? Well, I'm going to play it, and I'm going to say goodbye to everybody, and I'm going to play this on the, uh, on the outro, and uh, that'll do. Okay. So, thank you very much for everybody for watching. We have had a, a bit of a up and down show today. It's been uh, been fun. Nice to have everybody back, and hopefully we will shall um, we shall have everyone again next week, depending on schedules. We may even have a guest next week. Actually, we've got uh, we've got some things going on for some people to, we're talking to. Thanks to everybody in chat. Thanks to everybody who has contributed to the show, and we shall see you next week. See you later. Bye. Bye bye.